sending data to the things. Dave, we need to take your, uh, your pictures. Not we do. Too. Tokyo Megs, Dan Marino. What's up, Tokyo? What's up, Dan Marino? Megs. What's up, Anto? Hey, Dave, here's a. Add this link to your list of links. Hi. What's up, Paul? Freaky on a Monday night. Paul's here. Yeah, it's because uh, they're sponsoring us. Is that why? <laughs> Is that why you had to get the logo? I had to stir some vent this uh, this uh, mm. microphone thing. <clears throat> Air horn. All right. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, I got it. All right. It looks like everything's running. We're rolling. We're live. We're on the streams. We got a lot of people tuning in. That's nice. Excited. Ready to get ready to get yes. pooned. Pooned. <laughs> oh, it's time. It is time. All right. Y'all ready to start our recordings? Yes. Yeah, yes. All right. I am rolling. I am rolling as well. Yes. I, um, too, am rolling. Everybody well. just keep an eye on your waveforms during the show if you can. It's um, one of those things where sometimes it just decides, hey, I'm not going to record anymore. So if there's any issues... Just uh, let us know. Like, if it stops, we can pause for the cause, fix it, all that. And cool. that's it. Lucky says we're drinking. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Dave, are you drinking tonight? No, I'm not drinking. I don't drink much anymore. I really don't. Good. Nope. I guess. Yeah, it's pretty good, I guess. What is it? It's September. So next month will be What's 12 on? years since oh, I've had a drink. You? Yes, yeah. twelve years. Yeah, I would love to know all about that. <laughs> if you, just, you decide to go into it, you just stop. You yeah. just stop, and you, you never do it again. That's, that's how I, uh, that's how that's I quit smoking too. I just stopped and never picked up another one. And you went in the forest nice. as well, right? On a little journey. <clears throat> what? And you went in the forest on a journey. Right? I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little cleansing. Wind bush. Wind bush. Yo, yo. What up? What up? I got 20 minutes left of your course. That's it. All right. And then I have 100% that course. All right. We're it is to, it is very very good. Dude, the whole the whole deliver. uh chapter on uh uh the Quixel stuff totally worth it. Yeah. Oh, Quixel. Is it out? Is it Quixel. officially out? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Soon. Yeah, <laughs> dude, there's been so much hype for that course, man. Yeah. Finishing it's touches. Good. I need it. Good. Yeah. Like I need it's, it. it like our like our Houdini course, I now feel like super comfortable in it. 
you know, and all the the C four D to Unreal stuff. It's like I got I got it, it in the show I'm notes. Got to save save it. Okay, man. sorry. Save it. Sorry. <laughs> it's never <laughs> as good the second time. It's not gonna be as good. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're all rolling. We're going to do a clap. It will be one, two, three, clap. All right? So mm -hmm. get ready. So here we go. One, two, three. Awesome. Perfect. I rushed it just by a little bit. Just <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Man. I think we'll be all right. That's it. You're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we are good. We are good. Stop being afraid of Unreal. Stop, yeah. <laughs> question mark, though. Question uh, yeah, mark. Yeah, question mark. Stop being afraid of Unreal. All right. I got my drinks. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Here we go. Starting. What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. I'm Matt. Joining us today is the greatest motion capture Simba to ever grace the screen, Mr. Clint <laughs> Jones. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the man. You can email us, info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show, questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, show topic ideas, guest ideas. Let us know. Email us. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com. You can find us everywhere. And you can send us emails like this one from Logan. And I don't know if it's Piney or Penny. I haven't heard it pronounced in person, but I do see that name a lot all over the place, all up on our streams, <laughs> all up on the internet, all up on the Maxon streams. Uh, yep. I've been, been seeing a, a lot of Logan who says, Dave, sadly, I never did, never did get the Houdini course. I plan to. Life and our family business took priority. Uh, we nearly went under this season. We ran a summer camp wedding venue one hour north of Toronto. We have a rustic boutique camp and it can accommodate cool. 80. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Putting, putting it out there. Camp MoGraph. Yeah, he says putting it out there in case you ever need it for Camp MoGraph. And uh, the venue, the, the Hollows Camp. Uh, let's see. I know it's not in the USA, so not sure if you'd even consider it, but wanted to let you know it could be available Absolutely. to accommodate you as a backup it. plan. You and Matt are great. I'm a huge fan of the podcast, enjoying listening while I'm doing Thanks. work around the property. Lots of legit laughs and tons of knowledge to soak up uh, for a new artist. Wanted to let you know I've saved up for the Windbush course. Please make yeah. sure I'm on the list to be yes. the first <laughs> to give you my money. Matt is, I assume, <laughs> entering a dark emotional corner of sadness as the USA band's TikTok downloads. Have <laughs> a great weekend. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Congrats on it the didn't weight happen. loss. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, it didn't happen. <laughs> so we're, we're good there. It's all there. empty threats. Yeah. It's fine. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so we got that course coming up. Uh, it's it's going to be a good week. It's the 21st night of September. Like you hey, do. Hey, all right. The 21st <laughs> of oh, September. Oh, that's tonight. That's that right is. now. Yeah. Yeah. He released his video. Mm hmm. The video's out. Yeah, it's amazing. He, he released his video for those who don't know i don't know the name of the youtuber um i can look it up real quick while i'm talking about it but every year on september 21st um he releases a video um demi oh man i don't even know how to say the the last name just type in september 21st and you'll yeah, see you'll all of his it. videos he He's released it nine money. hours ago it's already got like uh 1.2 million views nice. oh my and goodness. what's cool What's cool is at the end, uh, he says, uh, he says, you know, make sure to check out, uh, he, he's creating the video to like, to help out different charities. So he's got five yeah. different charities, you know, and you go to the link, it's like, uh, so what is it? September, September S E P T 21st. So two one S T.com, I believe. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah. And so you can see the different charities and whatever, Within, he was trying to raise fifty thousand dollars. He's already up to one hundred and seventy. What? That's awesome. That one, yeah, it's that's awesome. It's so cool. So so cool. Yeah, man. Gee. So we get more September twenty first videos next year because yeah. he matched his goal, which is yeah. great. Yeah, Tokyo so. Meg said that's why we're doing it tonight. See, it all worked out. It all worked out. No. Oh, it's on purpose. <clears throat> sure, we'll, we'll leave Sweet. it at that. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, you know. Break the normal schedule here. Oh, it's um, all good. It's all good. And accommodate. I know, I know. Uh, 
one of y'all get to bed a little earlier than the other. <laughs> Just so, a little bit. Much appreciated. <laughs> yeah. I got two kids. Dude, my kid, my kid, he's got three teeth coming in at the top. You know, three mm. teeth all at once. And so yes. he was just he was up all night last night. So I'm no offense, Winbush. I'm going through your course today. I'm kind of drowsing off. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And like, I, I think I've uh, I think I've accustomed myself to like when I'm holding the child and rocking him, you know, to sleep. Like I kind of fall asleep as well. So I'm sitting there watching Winbush's course and I'm like rocking back and forth and like just slowly drowsing off because I've <laughs> I've 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 forced myself to to know when I'm rocking someone is supposed to be asleep. It's funny. <laughs> anyway. So I took a twenty minute nap and then powered through the rest of it. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah, and as far as the course is concerned, uh, we are in the last mm. throws right now, just getting the materials ready to go. So yeah, um, going through like everything, to, you know, yeah. beta testing, making sure that all the stuff is good. You know, yeah. we didn't miss any edits or something, but it's a it's a super good course for those mm -hmm. who are looking to get into Unreal Engine, especially having a C4D background. You know, it's yeah. a it's a really, really great course. So I'm dying for that course, man. Yeah. I am so excited. Like there's been a ton of hype and Winbush <laughs> is a super cool dude. So yeah. I am ready. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. What up? What up? Yeah. <laughs> what up? <laughs> and in in other uh, news during the week, oh, we got to tell the story about the thread ripper being stolen. Oh gosh. Did we even talk about? We, no, that was this, no. That was I, last no, week, we huh? Haven't. That was last week. Yeah. Man. So um, we order. So you know we're 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 in, we're in an okay place right now. So we're like you know want to upgrade our computers and stuff. So we didn't want to upgrade the the motherboards that we had, but we wanted to upgrade the processors. We had only the eight core 16 thread thread rippers. So we upgraded to the 32 core 64 thread thread rippers, you know, <clears throat> and it's like, okay, cool. We're going to do that. We're going to buy some 3080s and we're going to have massively awesome machines. It's going to be great. So I ordered, we ordered them from B and H probably like a month ago mm -hmm. and they've been on back order. You know, mm. so I was like, oh, this is so stupid. But it was like three hundred dollars cheaper per card or per CPU, you know, so saving six hundred bucks was kind of worth it. But I had no idea when it was going to be in stock. So I finally just said, screw it. I'm going to spend the six hundred dollars. We canceled. We bought them through Amazon and they showed up like the next day. Right. So <clears throat> I get the box. I open it up. And actually, let me show you what it looked like. Hold <laughs> you on, hold on. Have it. Oh, man. We were so excited too. We we're so excited. So I get the box, right? Uh -huh. Sorry, that's, that's bad radio walking away, right? There you, there you go. So I get the box, and this is what it looks like. If you can see, oh. there's no thread ripper in there. Dude, so, someone punched through the back of it and no, pulled it out. It looked, no, well, at least it looks like that. It's they got a hole, like it's on it display. And then they taped it back up, they took what? everything out. And, so, and this was in the Amazon the box, sealed in the Amazon box. It was in the in Amazon. The Amazon. Box. So it's not like like normally you hear when people are stealing stuff, they steal it off the porch, you know, but I was literally like I, I was there the second they dropped it off and picked it up and opened it up. And I was like, oh, this is so sad because <laughs> it's like one of those things where it's a very high dollar item. This is like a two thousand dollar processor. Right. You know, and it's like you don't want to have to call up Amazon and be like, dude, someone stole my Am my two thousand dollar processor. <laughs> Oh, I still have the packaging, but they somehow opened yeah. up the packaging. Oh, but the Amazon box was completely intact and stuff. And you're just like, that sounds so sure, sketch. Sure, right, know? Matt. Uh -huh. Right, exactly. So yeah. I can only assume that one of two situations happens, happened. Either one, someone for, in the Dallas distribution office got a hold of it, opened it up, you know, uh, took the thing out put it back together and then shipped it out to me, which I don't know why they would do that. Or two, it someone took it out, returned it as a return, and then someone not knowing what it was, reshelved mm -hmm. re it, you know, was supposed to and be then it went there. back out to me. Yeah. If it was so, stolen by the processor guy, right, the guy, you know, just kind of sending packages through, he would have sent it to, like, make it look cool in the computer system. Like, Oh yeah, all of your packages were sent out. Versus, what's this one missing one? And he has to answer for it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this that was is from sketchy. AMD. So what'd you do? Like, well, I called them 
I called him and I was Amazon, on the phone right? for like Amazon? an hour. Yeah. I actually got a hold of someone because it w what was very nice about it, and I will say, you know, as much as Amazon basically takes over our lives and stuff, and you know, as sketchy as that could have been, I um uh, it said, how was your delivery, you know, on the app? It said, your thing has been delivered. How was it? And I said, bad. <laughs> you know, I can say good. Uh, and it said, why was it bad? And I said, missing stuff. And it said, do you want to contact someone? And I said, yes. And they said, okay, they'll call you right now. What phone number? So mm -hmm. someone actually called me. And it was all from the app. It was all right after it got delivered, which was really nice, you know? And so I talked to someone for like an hour and they're like, all right, we'll send you a new one. It's going to be Friday. And this was like Monday. I was like, oh man, I really want to get this tomorrow. So I was like, all right, just refund my money and I'll buy another one. You know? So I bought another one on Amazon, ended up showing up on Friday. Anyway, they yeah. had to ship it from Canada because apparently they only had two in stock here in Dallas, you mm. know? And yeah. so it had to come well, to me, one. but <laughs> yeah, technically. One. <laughs> so I, uh, uh, so when the next one came, when the final one came, um, I was watching my phone all day, all day. I wanted to be there when the carrier got there so that I had proof when I opened it that it would or would not be there. And then Dave, when he found out that I, that this happened, he was waiting for the carrier to make sure and I open it up for me outside. Yeah. I'm like, okay, it's there. Cause yeah, it's direct I did from the AMD. Exact same. This isn't like a third party seller yeah, or somebody it's not a third party like this seller is or anything like that. Direct. So it had to be someone straight up had to rip it from the Amazon warehouse, I'm sure. Wow. You know. That's crazy. Yeah. And what's ridiculous is the amount so my brother used to work there and he said the amount of like crap that they have to go to or go through just to get into the warehouse and stuff. Like they check your bags, they check all the stuff, you know. I I'm I, I don't know how anyone would be able to get out with one of those unless they stuffed it in their sock or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Or if they like, left it in there, it's like it's still in the building. <laughs> and then like they have to go through a really complicated series of yeah. of tactics to get it out the door. Like would they send it yeah. with the food delivery guy? You know? Like, oh, yeah, that's there a good go. one. Or they do a shipment themselves on their lunch break and then intercept the shipment to themselves, you know? <laughs> Like yeah. they know what they're going to ship so that they can then just slip it in that box. Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. So, a lot. So, <laughs> along the CPU lines, and I'll make this story short because I want to get to the good stuff I here. Swallowed it in a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, okay. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to install this. This shouldn't be too hard, right? I just need some thermal paste. I'm going to pop this in there. Everything is going to be yeah. fine. Wrong. So <laughs> quick, quick 15 minute trip. We're in, we're out. We're yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 15 minutes morning. Yeah. Uh, six hours later I had it working. Uh, so what happened unquote, was working. Yeah. Quote, unquote, so working. I put it in and it won't post. It won't post at all. I'm like, oh man, what's the deal? And I start looking around and I realize that my motherboard wasn't up to date you have to do the update the bios update to the motherboard okay fine because we were on the original first gen thread rippers and then this one is actually one of the second gen thread rippers so you had to right. update the bios in order to you had to actually right. update the bios twice because right. there was a bridge in between but it has a button on the back where you can update it i'm like no problem but it says only install this version if your version was such and such from way back in the day. Yeah. If it was too, if it's way back there, then you need to upgrade it twice. Well, how do you find yeah. out what version of the BIOS you have? You have to have the computer post, but to have a computer post, I have to have my old CPU in. So I'm like, okay, yeah. well, I'm out of thermal paste because I had like this much thermal paste and it was just enough. And I'm like, I can't go back now. So how am I going to get thermal paste? And I had all this work to do. I'm like, I, I sh why did I do this? I, I've screwed myself. Yeah. I don't know. And so I'm like, all right, how am I going to get thermal paste at six o'clock at night? Best Buy just closed. And it's COVID, right? So yeah. so maybe you could get it the next day. Maybe you have to have it shipped. It could take two or three days to get thermal paste right now. And I'm like, man, I have pushed myself into this and, corner. Yeah, and you <laughs> you know, you have work to do and I have work to do and things to get done. So, you know, I'm thinking, OK, well, my dad's down the street with, he, you know, he has a computer company, but he doesn't do a lot of custom builds anymore. And he's like, oh, maybe I have some. And I go over there. I went to my storage place first. Couldn't find it anywhere. I looked through the old box because I always take my old stuff from my old 
computers mm-hmm. and I put everything into the motherboard box that was left over yeah. just in case, right? And usually that's thermal paste as well. Nothing in storage. Go over to his place. I found my Beeple that Winkleman yeah. sent me. Uh, so I got my Beeple sitting here on the thing now on my on my 3D printer somewhere over there. Um, and then uh, my dad didn't have any thermal paste. I'm like, dang it. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. It's getting later and later. Super glue, man. You got to just super glue. Yeah, 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 I know, right? <laughs> so I'm like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to storage because the computer that I previously built – my first build is now a render machine. I mm-hmm. swear I had a big thing of thermal paste in there, but I've been through like two moves since then, a divorce. Mm-hmm. Like this is like four <laughs> years ago, right? Oh. And so I'm looking around in storage. I'm going through all of this stuff and like I'm getting super upset and I have my headphones on. And for some reason, the music, the iTunes was playing random music in my car and it's playing like sad Michael Jackson music. And I'm going through these old boxes and I found my daughter's old halloween costume i made her and i'm like crying and i'm like what is wrong with me and i'm like and i go to the back and i'm like everything sucks and i'm like i guess i'm done i guess i'm not getting any work done tonight and i look down and i see my old in the very very back corner dude i have i have climbed on top of everything there's old couches and boxes and things i i'm just like stuck in the back corner and mattresses everywhere and i'm standing on my old mac pro 2010 or no, t- 2008, whatever it was. And there's an old power supply on it. And I look down and there's a box and it's a motherboard box. And I'm like, no way. And I open it up and there is like, oh, the thermal paste in the back. <laughs> and I come back and oh I God. set it up and I, and I went through all that. Now I'm having BIOS USB power issues and all sorts of stuff, but I got it working. I got mm-hmm. it working. Wow. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, so Funny Moral thing of the about story, thermal paste. keep thermal paste handy. Yeah, just keep thermal paste. So a uh, funny thing is, uh, uh, and I didn't tell you this, Dave, but the other night I'm asleep, you know, and my, my best ideas come to me while I'm asleep. Yes. Right? So I'm sleeping... <laughs> And I'm thinking about like how excited I am to get this uh, to get this new CPU installed and stuff, and so I'm like, okay, I gotta remember thermal paste because Dave had a hard problem with thermal paste. So I'm pretty sure my thermal paste is in my my motherboard box, like I do as well. And then I was thinking about it. I was, and all of a sudden it dinged to me. It's like, no, it's in your desk drawer. Go look in your desk drawer. So when I woke up the next day, I looked in my desk drawer, and sure enough, it was in there. Dude. You have all these oh, man. epiphanies at 4 a.m. Epiphanies, yeah. I came you guys up with ever the... close your eyes and uh, and and see the Cinema 4D like UI and yes, you know, <laughs> yeah. That's happened to me a couple times. Yeah, those that... late nights, you know, those late rainy yeah. nights. That's that's what happened to Matt actually one night. He got the idea for a plug-in at yeah. 4 a.m. in his sleep. I woke yeah. up. I immediately wrote it down. Nice. You know, and then uh, I built it. We released it. We made like fifty dollars off of it, and that was it. <laughs> because we didn't push it very hard, because it pissed off a lot of people in our industry. Whoops. Oh so, man, yeah. that's when you got to push it super hard. Yeah, <laughs> but crazy, like, though. I don't know, because like, like when we released it, it was like a lot of people were like, "Oh boy, you shouldn't have done this." And so I immediately, you know, emailed Paul, and I was like, "Oh." did I mess up? And he's like, well, the Germans know about it. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> the Germans know about it. <laughs> what, what was it? Can you say it was, I was basically recreating the, uh, the MoGraph functionality in uh, C40 light, you know? So basically, oh, okay. you know, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. You can't do it now. It, it worked with the older stuff because uh, Ex- Expresso was still, you know, they included Expresso. So you could basically build out anything you want nowadays. Yeah. Because of me, they got rid of it. <laughs> wow, fault. that's quite so the feat, though. That's crazy. To be yeah. able to come up with that at 4 a.m., pop up, write it down, knock it out, release it, like, that's that's like a miracle. Yeah. It comes out of nowhere, yeah. randomly, without any sort of, it just, it just boom, you yeah. know? That's crazy. I thought that yeah. was going to be our million-dollar idea, too, but... You know, no, it's all right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta Keep roll with it. the punches. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's okay. Because yeah. you know we va- we value the relationship we have with Maxon, and right. the people. You know, we don't we don't want to butt heads. Screw that. Yeah, up. they're yeah. good guys. Yeah. They're really yeah. really good guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I showed them a flaw. There you go. <laughs> and um, they fixed it. 
Yeah, the only other things that I have are real quick, and, and I won't get really too far into this, and hopefully I can release like a tutorial or a video or something, is I've been playing with uh, Touch Designer a little bit, and it was so yeah. easy. I was able this weekend, I, I just had, again, one of those epiphanies, right? I'm like, I got this new pool table. I should put a projector over it and projection map onto it and do like be able to do practice shots and line up angles. Oh, so, nice. I'm like, okay, so I got uh, Connect working, and it's able to like see the ball on the on the floor here in my office and track it with blob tracking and stuff. And so that's step one, and then I got to figure out step two, question mark, <laughs> profit. Step three, but, profit. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if if I get to something good on that, I'll release a little tutorial because uh, Touch Designer is not as hard as I thought, and it's a lot yeah. like Espresso. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a cool idea. That's a really nice like application of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is Houdini's because it's the same. It's isn't it by somebody who worked? Yeah. There? So uh, yeah. Houdini, like the 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 cre So the two creators of the creator of Houdini and the creator of Touch Designer, they I believe they were working together, and one wanted to go into more uh, real time stuff, and the other one wanted to work more in VFX, and so they kind of like shared some knowledge or whatever and split off into their own things it's yeah, pretty cool and there's like sops and other ops and things mm -hmm. in there too and everything and uh so yeah yeah so <clears throat> I'll, I'll keep you updated the last thing before we get to the good stuff here is uh just wanted to touch on 3080s uh we wanted yeah. to buy eight and we got zero yeah so we got zero yeah <laughs> uh, i refreshed like I had four different tabs all refreshing at once and couldn't find a single one. Really? So, yeah. Dang, they're yeah. like Radiohead tickets. You just can't get them. Right? right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, so, uh, we'll see. Um, if you want one, they're on eBay for like five grand. But, mm. you know, there's there's been rumors that there's a 3080, like a 3080 Ti or something like that, or a 3080 Super that's supposed to be yeah. coming out, and it's got 20 gigs of VRAM versus the 10 on the 3080. Yeah, I've got and a link so, in the show like, notes. It's a 3080 if that 20 happens, gig. If that happens, like we may we may just end up waiting for that. Mm -hmm. But that I mean they're so they're so crazy powerful in comparison. Like I'm 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 looking at like just if I pop the 3380s in my machine as it is right now, Jeez. I triple my speed. Yeah. That's crazy. Speed, you know? Just just one thirty eighty is equal to my second render machine. Yeah, with my three nine eighty Ti's in it. That's incredible, and it's only going to get better. It faster, is certainly going to get better. Yeah, quicker, better. Um, so what was I going to say? Oh yeah, they always come out with a super, and they always come out with yeah. the with the mm -hmm. Ti and and all the Founders mm -hmm. Edition and stuff. Now, did those drop at the same time, or is it usually like a super first? No, and it's TI? normally it's, it's normally it's the way they do it. Like I think the twenty twenty eighty Ti or the the Titan came out in like November. Yeah. So you're mm -hmm. looking at probably the next month, next two months. You know, that's when the next ones are going to come out. <laughs> I've heard rumors that they're waiting until uh, AMD releases their announcement on their big navi cards or whatever you know because and then the next day they'll swooping. drop theirs and they'll be like see ya <laughs> you know yep whatever. that's crazy yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah we'll wait we'll wait yeah it's fine it's fine. a month after is very fast yeah like, yeah that's like nothing there he is. There's Ariev. Ariev's here what's up Ariev? David hey, Octane Jesus dude I learned so much from this dude so yeah. much man um such a good dude heck yeah yeah he is. we were uh we were hanging out at his place uh uh last, last weekend week. yeah. The, yeah last weekend and he's like dude have y'all seen the uh <laughs> clint doing the motion capture stuff <laughs> it's like no so we all sat down like there was a group of like five or six of us so we all sat down and watched that entire video it, it is such a good video it is That's such awesome. a good video. I'm glad yeah. you guys enjoyed that. I love, I love being goofy like that, man. That's like, I, I have um, a background in martial arts. So oh, nice. I did yeah. as a kid. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, it's huge for me. I love doing flips mm -hmm. as a kid. Like, I still can do a back flip. still can do a front flip. Like, I got I to gotta keep that for as long as I can. Right. You know I mean? um, so the mocap thing and just being super goofy is like it's that's right up my alley man that's hilarious you guys <laughs> enjoyed that that's awesome that's great yeah it was yeah. totally great all right david if you can stay <clears throat> up long enough we can play a game of halo tonight i'm just saying 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like a week. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your journey. It's it's time to talk about your journey in mm-hmm. in VFX and MoGraph 3D, all the things. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I I do not know where to start, so I think I'm just gonna let you go for it, honestly. All right, you have to reel me back here. So you were born. Yeah, let's just go. Let's, <laughs> no. uh, how about? Let's start. So, um, uh, uh, Sam and Nico were one of the were the founding members of Corridor, right? They were. Um, yes. And then, at what point did you join the team as well? So, that was back in like when did YouTube start? Like 2006, something like that. So, sure. Yeah, around there. We'll go with that. So that's when we all started. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had my Punisher channel, mm-hmm. Sam and Nico, or Freddie had uh, Freddie yeah. W. Mm-hmm. Freddie Wong. And yeah. then um, I think Corridor started a little after that. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, we were all fans of each other's work. Um, yeah. I, was in, I was in Georgia at the time going, I mean, I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And you had Sam and Nico out here in L.A., Freddie out here in LA and yeah, we just loved each other's videos and eventually just, you know, uh, built a relationship, built a friendship. Um, just because we're into similar stuff, we do similar stuff. And, um, you know, I moved out, I'm skipping over so much stuff though, but I moved out. <laughs> we'll, we'll jump back to that. Yeah. We'll go yeah, back to it. I moved out to LA, um, and started just working out of Freddie's studio, which is mm-hmm. still where corridor is right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just in this back room with no windows, no door, brick walls, um, concrete floor. And I was just working on cardboard warfare too, mm-hmm. for like four or five months when I came out. So we were all kind of like working in the same room, not essentially on the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I'd say the first thing we officially like i mean we were we were filming videos with each other you know um mm-hmm. just for our own thing i was in their videos yeah. they were in my videos and helping each other out as well yeah like different yeah. VFX stuff i remember mm-hmm. seeing some behind the scenes stuff where you know the crew was helping out freddie with some of his videos and back and forth you know yeah it's kind of always been that way like we always help each other out now it's definitely more of like um you know corridor has grown so much since then mm-hmm. Um, and we actually, we were still working with Freddie. Like we, he was in tactical three loads that just came out like last week that we yeah. finally finished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw that today. So we're, we're all, we're all staying in touch. We're all good friends. Um, so I think it's a lifelong journey there, you know? And did you, okay. So did you go to high school in LA or no, you said you were in Atlanta, Georgia somewhere. So, so basically, um, I was I was in Chino Hills for uh, for freshman year of high school, mm-hmm. and um, that's basically forty five minutes east of Los Angeles, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And my dad gets a job. Um, he works in retail, so he gets a job in Atlanta. So we moved to Atlanta at the end of freshman year of high school for me, and I have to go to another high school in Atlanta where I don't know anybody. Everyone knows everyone except for me. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, it was weird. It was weird. I did not like it. I was there for three months. Very strange time. I got by. <laughs> I got by in those three months. And then um, basically I had, well, 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 what is it? I don't know. You're you're not going to school for some time. Is that summer break? Is that yeah. spring break? What break is that? I don't even know. Summer, summer break? Oh. Yeah, there's summer and then there's spring anymore. and then there's Christmas break and... You know, winter break. It was the break between break. ninth and tenth grade. That's all I know. All right. Yeah. So summer break. Yeah. Summer, summer vacation. Yeah. Summer vacation. <laughs> and I had no friends. I just followed tutorials. Um, I spent all my time watching Andrew Kramer tutorials and yeah. just mm-hmm. learning as much as possible. And I got so obsessed with the technical process of filmmaking first mm-hmm. and dove in head first into all of that. And, um, yeah, you know, I started a new high school, uh, Creekview high school in Canton, Georgia. I went there for 10th, 11th, 12th grade, made some lifelong friends. In fact, one of those guys, Adam, he was over here last night. We were playing smash bros. Nice. Um, so definitely made some good friends there. And, um, I went to college 
two years of tech tech college. It was Chattahoochee Tech. It was for digital media arts, which was just nice. Yeah, I guess it's Photoshop and Illustrator and After yeah. Effects. And you got it's, your it's all the stuff software. they can't figure out how to put into yes. like one super useful degree. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's more it's of a general generally thing. digital yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it was crazy because like. I speak from experience. I'm not trying to downplay your education at all. Oh, no, 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 no. You <laughs> must downplay it. That like, was let's go. Because, <laughs> and, and, and not to downplay anyone else's situation, but in my case, since I had been so obsessed with following all those Andrew Kramer tutorials, I was pretty proficient in After Effects by the time I got to my After Effects class. Mm -hmm. And the teacher was, he just let me work on my YouTube videos because he was like, dude, you know everything I'm teaching, so cool. just do your thing. And I was like, sweet, thank you, Mr. Mason. <laughs> and um, he, uh, if it wasn't for that teacher, Mr. Mason, I would not probably, I mean, I don't know about that, but my dad would not let me drop out of college. He said, mm -hmm. I'll, let you, I'll let you pursue whatever you want. You just need to get your degree just yeah. in case. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I fought it, but I wasn't like, screw you, dad. I was like, okay, I get it. Um, but I was persistent and I talked to Mr. Mason and he said, hey, look, if you have an opportunity to move out to LA before you graduate, which is the whole reason we're trying to get a degree here is to go out to LA to get a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, then go. Like if you, if you have a shortcut, then go for it. Like you're yeah. not going to, if you're in Mario Kart, you're going to, you're going to take those shortcuts. You know what I mean? Right. So you, you have to, you don't have to, but it just made sense for me at the time. Right. Um, and I told that to my dad and Mr. Mason explained that to my dad and my dad was like, you know what? Okay. And he let me do it. And he was like, I, you have my approval. You can move out to California. So I just packed up my car and like came out here. It was probably when it was 2011 and I came back out to LA. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, and years. so, like, you know, the the big ones here, Cardboard war Warfare. Yeah. I mean, it's got like 16 million views right now, you know, on 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 your channel. Like, so, and that's about, is that, did you shoot that here, or did you shoot that in L.A., or was that one of the ones you shot uh, back home? That was back home, yeah. That was, um, my buddy Tyler hit me up. Um, we were in high school together, and he's like, yo, do you want to build a tank? And I was nice. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> he's he like he's Absolutely so great, my buddy Tyler. He's like, he's the wackiest dude, and I'm down for anything. Like I'm like, dude, let's let's do it. Let's just be adventurous. Um, so we, yeah, we built that tank, and then we built it out of cardboard, and it drove. And we drove it down the street, and he, you know, we made it his senior project to guarantee it would get done. And I was just kind of like, you know, I was on heavy on the After Effects Andrew Kramer tutorials. Yeah. And this was right around the time I was like, you know what? I don't want to just do a VFX shot just to just to learn the VFX shot. I want to do a VFX shot that splices into a short film, into a story. Yeah. Um, and right around the time I finished the tank, Freddie hit me up and he was like, dude, you you should make a short film around this. And I was like, you know what? You are right. Yeah, totally. And like Freddie, I was like my idol. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, yeah. And so I came up with the Carbo Warfare thing, cut out all the guns, and um, got all my good friends. I, I mean, I'm still good friends with uh, with some of those guys there. And uh, we made Carbo Warfare. And I remember the night it went it went viral. I guess um, I was playing Magic the Gathering. Nice. And I was <laughs> sitting across from <laughs> one of these guys here, um, and I get a text from my buddy Brett, and he's like, dude. Um, you guys remember G4 attack of the show? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, heck yeah. 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 It got number one on that and it blew up and it went viral and it got like a million views and I was freaking out like in the middle of this magic game and I ran over and I told my dad, I was like, dad, this is crazy. And he's like, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. And then from there I was like, this is a thing. Like I want to do more of this. Mm hmm. Yeah. It was, that's was awesome. Adam Sessler, was, was he on that show or was he on a different G4 show? All those guys. He was a, it was Kevin. And, it was Kevin oh, something. Oh, Kevin. Um, I almost said Kevin. How long Rupp. did it take Kevin to make from this tank? Kevin from <laughs> Tech TV. Kevin that made Dig.com. Yeah, com. I, yeah. Um, the okay. tank took a year, man. Really? Jeez. Off wow. and on, it took a year. Yeah, we we built it out of PVC pipe, um, wrapped it in chicken wire, and then zip tied cardboard to it and mounted it over 
my friend's mom's truck. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Wow. It was crazy. It was an awesome, <clears throat> awesome thing. I love like just being creative and building things. So it yeah. was perfect. So how did, how, like, uh, uh, this was, I mean, this was 10, 10 years ago, you know, nine or 10 years ago. How, how were you and Freddie and the corridor crew all like communicating and how did y'all meet up? Because I, I mean, you're in, you're in high school, you know, and like, there's not a lot of, I didn't know if there was a lot of meetups or something, you know, meetups nowadays are a big thing, you know, Yeah. but like, and especially communicating with people, you know, like how, how did y'all, how did y'all hook up? How did y'all meet? How did y'all be, you know, become friends and stuff? It's the first, the first moment of, of communication was through YouTube messenger. When nice. YouTube had a messaging system. I don't think they have one anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and when Freddie checked his messages, like, yeah, <laughs> dude, I've seen that dude's YouTube inbox when there still was a YouTube inbox and it was like 26,000 unread messages, oh like craziness. And I'm just like, wow, I kind of got lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we were messaging back and forth through there. And then occasionally we would hop onto Skype and mm -hmm. have these, um, I would have a question from like, Hey dude, I have a VFX question. Can you help me with something? And he would hop on with me and be like, yes, let me help you solve this Buju tracking thing Good and old same Buju. Buju. yeah same for sam and nico like yeah they'd help me solve the jankiness of like you know um buju it was usually with buju. <laughs> i was like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just as an aside um putting 3d models like realistic 3d models into my live action footage realistically and and you know you know perfectly tracked and everything that was the biggest roadblock for me for so long. So like yeah. they kind of helped me like figure out that mystery zone, right? That was yeah. a weird kind of mystery for me. But so it was through that, you know, it was through Skype, just asking questions. And then I was I was posting a lot of content that I guess they liked. And I said, hey, I'm coming out for Comic Con or something. Um, uh, are you guys around or something? Yeah, come come stay with us. Come stay with us for a week. So I crashed with them for a week, and cool. we just played Minecraft like. For every day, we just played Minecraft, and that's when I met like Brandon and Jimmy, uh -huh. um, and you know basically everybody who worked out of that space. And me and Jimmy hit it off immediately. Yeah, um, we stayed up all night digging this like this upside down or basically a hole. We just dug a hole in Minecraft, and it was all symmetrical and huge. Uh -huh. and like, what are you guys doing? Like, dude, we're just digging this hole, man, and we're we're having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that funny. was kind of the connection there. Um, I just came out and uh they they had me over for a week and then from there like the connection was made right so mm -hmm. freddie was like yo you should come out man you should just move out here drop out of college move out here and i was like oh <laughs> okay i'll try i guess <laughs> yeah i guess the rest of this history kind of went yeah. from there that's and awesome so what was the first thing you collaboratively worked on then Technically, it would be a video on Freddy's channel called Beach Justice. Beach Justice. Um, he came out. He was doing this like road trip around the country, and he came around to Atlanta, and he hooked up with myself and my best friend, Brett, and we filmed Beach Justice together. Um, it's just a ridiculous little short um, where Freddy takes the shot of his life to kill the uh the drug dealer who is my friend brett and he's just running and he's running and he's running a mile and he's just lining up this shot and somehow he you know he shoots him so it's just super goofy kind of a thing and then man since then i was like in little tiny tutorials that sam and nico were doing uh -huh. um we did milkman we did uh with um with freddie we did uh what is it oh what is what is it um we did like we put together all these like little fight scenes and stuff out, out on the street, and then we did one in an airplane, um, and then with Sam and Nico, I I'm trying to think. I think the first big thing I did with Sam and Nico was I was I was the VFX um, like lead VFX supervisor on their web series called Sync, mm -hmm. so I was there just knocking out these VFX and putting together a team to 
you know, to put to, to finish the VFX for their first web series for a channel called Bamo, which isn't around anymore. But mm-hmm. man, was, was this before was or after the what was the name of that VHS kind of like VGHS? Was it? Yeah. Video game high school. Yeah. No, no. Well, there's that. There's that. But then there was that kind of like commercial, that VHS looking commercial. And it was for you know what I'm talking about, Matt? Oh, the, the Capri Sun thing was yeah, like yeah. the. Uh... Oh, gosh, that one was so funny. So I was the monster guy. I don't know if you guys were. Were you like, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that was at Rocket Jump. That was before. Yeah. So the sink and all that, and that was that was before. That was technically when Freddie W transitioned over to Rocket Jump. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Des directed that short, and um, he got some of his buddies to make this costume, and I was in this freaking nasty um monster costume sure, and hot. oh i don't remember i really don't remember <laughs> i just remember like there's a picture of me drinking like a smoothie or something with like the helmet off and i'm just like in a chair just oh that's funny <laughs> i remember matt we yeah. s- we saw him do a presentation on that at we NAB. Did, yeah we were at nab a few years ago when he was uh uh freddie was speaking and he showed off that that short like it was like right after it came out, a little bit after it came out. It was really funny. And the crowd, about, the crowd loved it. I think he actually used real VHS degradation. It wasn't like they a did. filter, they, right? Yeah. Yeah. Des bought a whatever you would buy, like a full tape deck or something, and he ran it through and <laughs> spit it out the other end, and it was it was legit. It wasn't a filter. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's it was. That. I, I love VHS stuff. I always will. Yeah. Yeah. Never gets. I got to say the, the behind the scenes, like, you know, you, you talk about watching Andrew Kramer tutorials and I think that's pretty much where a lot of us, you know, started, you know, but I feel like the, the quarter crew and Freddie, like doing these behind the scenes stuff and being able to see how it's all made, yeah. you know, that was a big inspiration for me being able to see that, Hey, you can actually, you can, you can do this for your job. You know, you can mm-hmm. make short films, you can, you can, and, and it's surprisingly easy, you know, uh, uh, other than, you know, having to track in Buju. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 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 another one, uh, another big influence, uh, Gareth Edwards, I saw him speak at an Adobe booth. Mm-hmm. Um, I was probably 10 years ago or so, but you know, he was just showing off a lot of the stuff that he did and like it, it, it amazed me watching his presentation and seeing all the other tutorials that I've seen. It's just like, oh, th- this isn't that hard, you know? Like, yeah, you can. I mean, it, it, it is hard. It, it is hard. It, it, like, it, it yeah. does take a lot of discipline and perseverance. I and do. I didn't mean to, to. Not that it's easy, but <laughs> no, it's, no, no. It's, right. it's right. It's attainable. It's attainable. It's right. attainable. Yes, yes, yes. Especially with what with the tools that we currently have. You know, yes, it's, it's that we can do it if we put our our minds to it. And if we dedicate ourselves, it's doable mm-hmm. for certainly it's not like hidden or mysterious. Like you ha- here are the things like, um, you know, everything's accessible on YouTube now. Like you can learn yeah. anything on YouTube. I'm anything like literally anything. So yeah. it's all out there. And it's just a matter of like, do you really want to dedicate yourself to learning this and going for it? You can do it. Yeah, for sure. I um I watched the Dominoes the Domino run yeah. today. We watched that one over at uh over oh at Ariev's house too. <sighs> dude, that freaking <laughs> That thing, was a lot dude. of tracking, dude. Yeah. Oh my god. Me and Ren me and Ren were like up till <sighs> midnight every night on that last week of, of upload. Mm-hmm. And it was it I wouldn't call this a nightmare project. <laughs> But it was pretty close. I mean, we had myself and Sam doing all the simulations. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, Sam was juggling, like, 12 other things, right? And and he's doing his very best to get me these sims in time. And, like, I'm parsecing into his computer to, like, finish these things and get them textured and... I'm sending them to Ren to 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 render and bust out. We're trying to render on as many computers as possible. Uh-huh. Um, there's so many little holes in this that have been patched. There's little all these patches <laughs> everywhere. I'm, <laughs> you. I'm like looking at three of them right now, and <laughs> especially this shot. We're like, cause we're like, oh yeah, 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 like you know, pretend like there's no VFX. 
You, it's yeah. like you have to pretend like there's no VFX elements and shoot it like you would actually shoot it if you were there, but you also have to shoot it for VFX. Right. And right. it got a little bit more towards shooting it for as if there were no VFX, which is uh-huh. what kind of what you want to do. You want if you're trying to make these VFX shots feel and look real, like not staged, like oh here's a wide tracking shot. Right. You kind of have to shoot it pretty naturally, but that means look how look how close the camera is to our bodies. Yeah. You know, yeah. like if you go if you go back a little bit and go back to the top of that like really long take, you can see how close the camera comes to all of our bodies, which basically means all of the tracking points that the computer is seeing in the background are completely wiped away because our bodies get too close. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. Yeah. And that happens like four times throughout that shot and like Ren is the master when it comes to tracking. He he's like, "You know what, dude? It's just going to take hours you're gonna have to sit down and you have to do manual points and that's what's gonna take and <laughs> oh god is he, you just gotta is he go still for it. using buju yeah <laughs> i mean we still use it we still Man. use Buju. Yeah. i i personally i use um a mixture of a lot of different things i'll go between honestly i'll start with after effects tracker mm-hmm. i'll always yep. start with after effects tracker yeah just default right if that doesn't work maybe i'll mask out the the, the moving objects in the foreground try again advance check the advanced box that mm-hmm. didn't work Hmm. Okay. Assess. Do I add in more info? Like the, what is it? The horizontal field of view option. Do I figure that out? Uh, okay. Nah, I'll just do it in, in Buju. Oh, Buju doesn't work for whatever reason. Oh, it's easier in C4D. I'll just go to C4D and do mm-hmm. it there. And it's just kind of like a balance of like, okay, what do I think? Yeah. What tool will best solve this problem in front of me? And I like having three options versus just, Oh, I'm just, you know, one one tracker, and I'm sticking mm-hmm. to that one. Have y'all tried yeah. PF track at all? No, but I, I am PF always track. trying to learn new stuff, so yeah, I'm open. Yeah, I've heard. I the one time I used it, it worked really well. Um, but I did. I have found that the I haven't used it in years. But when I did, Buju was actually really good. Yeah, no, yeah. it 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 is solid. Like when in doubt, Buju is always the answer for me at least, you know? Um, but, but honestly, man, after effects tracker is yeah. considerably like very easy to use. And, uh, I think his action movie dad, he mm-hmm. put out a, a tutorial on how to normalize and align your 3d points so that when you bring, he actually has a plugin, he released a plugin for it. Really? But when you, yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Um, but it basically, you set up and you normalize your 3D scene in After Effects um, through you know a couple little inputs. That way, when you bring in any element and you turn it to a 3D layer, it spawns right in the center point of your composition at scale. I, oh, that's cool. Ooh, it's so nice. convenient. And then when you yeah. bring it to C4D, it's all aligned. It's perfect. And, it's, mm-hmm. and all you have to do is just like adjust the scale or something. But it just makes life so much easier. So... I'll I'll go for After Effects Tracker to C4D and it just makes it so much easier. That's cool. I'll have to check that yeah. out. Yeah. We've Are been, we having him on the show? We yeah, need to have him I, on the we show. We need to we need to talk to him about that. Yeah. Yeah. We need to figure that out. Um and you know, but you but I, I'm a big PF track person, but you're right. Like there's sometimes it's just like, okay, you have one particular issue and you know that one of like four trackers is gonna have a better time with something and Yeah. It's just good to have all that around. Yeah. 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 So, uh, let's see. Uh, what what else? What else do we want to talk about here? I've got a huge list, but I kind of want to. <laughs> I kind of want to keep going in your, along the lines of like your videos and even your streaming because you've been streaming, live. Yeah. Lately. Um, yeah. Tell us more about that and what you've been streaming as well. Yeah, so um, at the beginning of the year, I'm like, you know what? I have neglected this channel long enough. It is time to finally just put something out. And um, I started doing C4D live streams every Saturday at 10.45 Pacific Standard Time. It's kind of an odd time, but, you know, that's where we're at right now. (laughs) Um, So it's like Saturday morning cartoons, you know, you hop on and... Mm -hmm. Whether you're following along with what I'm doing um, with the lesson on that Saturday, that's cool. You know, definitely learning a lot of stuff with C4D. Or if you're doing your own project, the whole point is that we're learning and growing together in our passions, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. 
you know, come hang out, chill on a Saturday, work on your passion, work, whether you're drawing, whether you're doing C4D, whether you're just, you know, finishing up your short film. But yeah, I'm streaming C4D every Saturday. Um, this next Saturday, I'm going to be going into, uh, it's C4D plus After Effects for like a simulated gore effect. Cool. Um, but yeah, no, it's been really cool. It's been a lot of work though with Corridor full-time job, mm -hmm. uh, you know, weekend streams that take up half of my Saturday. Yeah. Um, and helping some friends out with some VFX stuff on the side. Like it's, it's like two full-time jobs. It feels like, so yeah, it's a lot. So I got to make sure that I'm taking care of myself, um, mentally and physically. Yeah. So that I, I can... handling the, uh, the, the, the lockdown and everything, the quarantine. I personally, like when it, when it comes to like mentally and physically, I am, I am okay. Um, uh -huh. like I, I love doing yoga and I, and I recognize the need for exercise. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know I feel better after doing it. So it's mm -hmm. always kind of been a thing that I've been doing exercise wise and it just makes me happier. It makes me easier to deal with. Um, I would say as, as like, cause you're also very physical guy, right? I mean, you used to am, do yeah. martial arts, you know, you're all the, uh, the motion capture person, you know? Totally. Yeah. No, I, I, the way I think of it is, um, you know, so I, I actually am a, this is, this is going to sound so stupid. <laughs> I am a certified yoga instructor. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And, um, I, you know, just the, the more I know, right. The more I can learn, right. I don't teach yeah, classes, but on travel shoots, like we're, we do travel shoots at corridor. I like to just, Hey, you guys trying to do some yoga tonight before you go to bed. All right, let's do it. So I enjoyed that. Um, it's cool, but I, I recognize the need for yoga just because we're all going to get old and we're all going to fall, um, mm -hmm. randomly, whether we want to or not. And you can either break a bone and snap something or pull something really bad because you're going to go, you're going to go from standing to the most you've ever stretched in the last 30 years <laughs> in yeah. a second, yeah. in like a yeah. second. And if I can stretch every day or every other day, even once a week, mm -hmm. um, for the rest of my life and I fall and I, you know, fall into the splits, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not going to injure me as bad because I do it once a week yeah. or once, uh, you know, however long. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my thing. So I think it is like the key to youth. Um, and as long as I can stay limber and healthy, I'll be able to do the stuff I love, be able to hang out with the people I love more, you know? So that's kind of yeah. my whole thing feeling on that yeah. so it i like that. working out is like very that. very um it's important to me very important to me same for yeah. diet and everything you want to yeah. say that you've fallen and you can get up oh god right yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you fall you <laughs> fall into the splits yeah. and then you without using your hands pinch the ground and stand right. up <laughs> yeah yeah at 90 years old oh man that's funny and then you just look at fate <clears throat> and say bring it on bring um it on. yeah Jumping back to the motion capture stuff, uh, you know, when we watched the uh, the uh, remake of The Lion King. Um, <laughs> By you, the way, that was all Sam who, like, put together all those scenes and, like, the, the <laughs> rigged all the stuff and did the, the it's background. It's so good. It's, yeah. it's such a good video. I saw that on TikTok um, the other day. I had no idea. Like, I, I wasn't really even paying attention. I was scrolling through stuff and I saw it on TikTok. Oh, that's awesome. It might have not been so, a legit account, but... Right, you know. and, and actually, that was one thing that I was going to talk to you about. So, the uh, you guys did the, the Boss Town Dynamics video. Mm. You, mm -hmm. uh, were, you the, were you the robot on both of them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and... Excellent job, by the way, because Thank you. I really did. I, I really, it really felt like it probably was a robot, you know? So, yeah. your movements were great. Um... But I, I did notice, you know, and this is this is it's a it's a an example that I point to a lot within our industry. When that one came out, a lot of people were just like, you know, not giving credit where credit was due. And um, hmm. I, I, I believe on Twitter, y'all made it a very big point that if someone was going to share that video to make sure and let everyone know that the corridor crew were the ones who worked on it, you know? And so 
uh, for me personally, you know, that kind of uh, switch through a switch in my mind where it's like, anytime I see something that I know the original artist, mm. I make sure and give credit where credit is due. Yeah. And that was all because y'all pushed for that, you know, in that particular video. Nice. Yeah. Um, I think there's a book by uh, Austin Cleon, I think is his name. Um, and it's called like Show Your Work, I think. It's a small little square book. It's like black. He's another one that's yellow. And that was my main takeaway was like, if you're going to show any work, you need to give the credit where credit's due. Um, mm -hmm. That's just that's just what needs to happen every mm -hmm. time. Um, but it, it was an interesting thing because it got ripped and re-uploaded so many times. I think it so got many. like, there was one like Russian account that almost had 20 million views within like God. the second day on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if that didn't happen, it may not have gone as viral as it did. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. We were going well, for, uh, go ahead, with Boss Town Dynamics 1, right? Mm -hmm. The joke was that it's as real as possible. Right. But the scientists are beating this robot down. Mm -hmm. Like, it's physical comedy. It's, it's, hilarious. it's dark physical comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is my favorite. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> and but when, when you're doing these effects here, and I'm like, I'm so I like textured the robot. I gave it all the surface imperfections. Ren took a, a custom HDRI to light it realistically so it blended into the footage all nicely. But we were like, dude, there's no way anyone's going to think this is real because <laughs> obviously not. But mm -hmm. when we posted it, people were like, oh, my God, this is real. And we were like, yeah, this is hilarious. Like, that's like the best thing that you could get as a VFX artist when people yes. actually think it's real. Yeah. And we were, that was a fun week uh, at Corridor. Because yeah. we were we were just blown away at everyone's um, perception and take away from that video, but yeah, if it wasn't for all the reposts and reuploads um, from these janky you know accounts, it probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have gone as viral as it did. So we kind of owe a little bit to that. Yeah, it's a, you know it, it's like you you're upset about it, but you know did a better job on the second one, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did I did enjoy the second one with the the guns and stuff like that. I I thought that was that was pretty good. That was pretty yeah, good. That was but a fun one. I I felt like the first one, I don't know. The first one to me seemed like it could have been you know. Just a a lab somewhere where people are shooting on their phone and like showing off and stuff like that. It felt it it felt super super organic, you know, and and so like I I loved. I, I'm pretty sure I actually saw it on Reddit first, you know, as uh, like like they're punishing robots or something, you know, or this is what's going to cause the robot <laughs> uprising, you know, yeah. something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Before I actually saw it on y'all's account, you know. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it, it is funny. Like I, so many times, like people have people have told me, like, oh, that that was you, that was that was fake. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, totally. No, we. In that week we released Boss Town 2, we got we got well we tricked Joe Rogan, which was the best. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Cause yeah. I listened to his podcast a whole lot. That was awesome. And then um Hideo Kojima, who mm -hmm. made Metal Gear Solid, um, mm -hmm. he shouted it out and I was like, Oh my god. And then Neil Blancamp shouted it out too, and I was just like, dude, the trifecta, this is awesome. It was so cool. It was it was mm -hmm. such an exciting week. Um but yeah, the more people that thought it was real, it it definitely it felt good. But it yeah. was also kind of <laughs> funny and also sad at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't remember where it was, but I, I remember Ren oh, talking about how bad he entered the Matrix. The, yeah, uh, Dave, you're super you're super jittery you're in the now. Matrix, man. Oh, jittery. Yeah. Oh man. I don't like know what to you do about froze that. for a little bit. Yeah, the internet kinda acted a little janky. Hopefully I come back. Um <laughs> Is okay. it like completely hard to understand me right now? I can't now even. He, we can't even understand okay, you. Yeah. Here's what. Like, I'm what do. would he look like if he sounded like that? Well, that's a, that's How's that? Do thought. I sound better now? I mean, you sound like you're working <laughs> on your webcam. I'm on my yeah. webcam for you. I think I don't think the stream can even hear that. It's something that Skype does. So really? It's something Skype does. Yeah. So, uh, do I sound okay on the stream, everybody? I think I you're still okay. Sound okay. You're okay. You're a little. You're a little distant. Well, yeah, but that's just to you. That's not to the stream. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh, it's not to the stream. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then yeah. we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah we're chilling. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so you'll hear me on the webcam for It's been doing this every once in a while and I can't figure it out. Probably something to do with my USB and my new CPU, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It so, did it last week, but whatever. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, what were we talking about? What were we talking about? Um, Ren. Down dynamics. Ren, Ren said that that particular one was the absolute, like, most ridiculous amount of like hand tracking and VFX. Like it just got ridiculous with the, the VFX and the masking and the, just everything. I don't remember yep. where I heard him say that, but. Oh, I mean, I'm sure he said it a couple different places. It was, it really was man. Like the hardest part of that whole thing was not building that robot from scratch. It was not, um, shooting it in the 105 degree heat going back for reshoots. Cause some it was we accidentally didn't record on on the motion capture oh. <laughs> it was not um it wasn't any of that it was painting me out that was the hardest part yeah um, yeah painting me out removing me from all that stuff from all those shots even when you have people passing behind me you have to paint those people back in um so oh, any moving geez. elements any, any, yeah, any moving elements mm. that go behind me have to be painted back in, moving and looking correct. Uh -huh. Even dust, even smoke, like all that stuff. It was bad. Um, so that was definitely the hardest part. And then tracking and getting that to line up with the hole that we cut out that is, you know, a me-shaped hole. You yeah. have to fill that back in uh, with a perfect track, right? So we mm -hmm. had different methods. Sam actually just did a 3D track and pasted in a static background at times. Oh, cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then me and Ren were using the Content Aware Fill tool in After Effects for certain moments. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of those two different methods. And the hardest shot for me, man, was the shot where I'm shooting the dummies and going through, like, I go underneath a caution tape thing that Jake pulls out and I'm shooting all these different dummies. Like painting in the background for all that was ridiculous because um, there were so many different moving parts, moving shadows. Right? Oh, I had no. to paint in the moving shadows. And shadows geez. are the worst. It's bad. <laughs> like it, it's it's bad. It, it was kind of a situation though where like with the first one, the shadows were very soft, which mm -hmm. they're elusive. You know, they're they're sneaky. If you don't get a perfect paint over of that shadow. Or if you don't remove the whole shadow or mm -hmm. cut it off like right mm -hmm. where the shoe meets um, the ground, you're gonna tell. But with yeah. a hard shadow, it's it's easier and it's harder. It's easier because like you can clearly see what needs to be fixed, and it's harder yeah. because it's very specific what needs to be fixed. You know? Yeah, yeah. it's very and prominent. So you're yeah. you're doing a, all this stuff in just After Effects C4D. Yep. Um, and maybe a little bougie if we need it, but I think Sam right. was tracking sam was tracking in after effects i think i can't remember he's probably going back and forth but yeah mm -hmm. it was just c4d um mo i modeled and textured those robots in c4d and then after effects to comp yeah that was it i feel your pain on that i've done a i've i I've, I've done quite a bit of you know the repainting over in vfx stuff uh there's a youtuber named david lopez he was big on vine for mm -hmm. uh, when vine was around you know, and uh, uh, we've done a few jobs for him, uh, specifically one where we had to take his face and put it on a kid's body, you know, yeah. and oh. like lots of movement. You got to paint out all the backgrounds and it takes yeah. time. It takes a lot of time and being able to use some of those special tricks like, you know, just tracking in a still image in the background, you know, it, mm -hmm. cl it cleans up stuff really quickly. Yeah, we talked to uh, one of the VFX artists on Chappie, and he said, yep, that's pretty much mm -hmm. it. We just, we spent, I think, they said that they spent two months on a shot. Um, wow. Three months. I think it was the one artist said, yeah, I worked on like three or four shots in that movie. Mm -hmm. um, just because there's so many shots in Chappie where you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're painting, you're basically painting out, uh, what's that actor's name? I don't um, the guy who was in District 9. They're painting him out. Mm -hmm. And he's not even, they said he didn't even have tracking markers on him or um, he didn't have motion capture. There was no motion capture. It was just the gray suit. And they were hand animating the robot based off of his reference off the, off of his you know, footage. So it, it, they were in the same boat. <clears throat> um, and I was like, man, even the pros are doing this. That is ridiculous. Yeah. That's nice to be able to, uh, 
have like a, a real world reference to talk to, you know, especially yeah. cause that it's, it's a movie about a robot, you know? So totally. like, and it kind of gives you like a sense of pride that you're doing it the right way, you know? <laughs> I guess. I yeah. guess the right way. Yeah. <laughs> We're not using the nuke. Right. Way, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quote unquote. Yeah. And your, your other streams, uh, I did see you did like a four and a half hour stream on looping, uh, in cinema 4d, yeah. like was that last week or, or something like that. Right. Um, yeah, I didn't yeah. get to watch it, but I, I saw that was on there. Is that kind of like the whole, uh, Shapiro, uh, mm -hmm. Gavin Shapiro. Gavin yes. Shapiro. Yeah. Yes. I watched some of his tutorials. So basically the, the, the background for that. Um, so yeah, last week I did a looping animation in C4D tutorial. is is called my first looping animation in uh -huh. C4D. And um, you know, at Corridor we were challenged myself, Ren, and Peter all to make a looping, a satisfying looping animation. Um, like the what is it? Wanders Wanders that one. guy. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Or like yeah, um, Shapiro as well. And it was. You know, I watched I watched a couple of his tutorials. I watched his Maxon uh, tutorial, yeah, mm -hmm. the hour long one. It was really really good, very intricate. I mm -hmm. learned a lot from that, so I utilized all that. And um, you know, I, I do a stream every single Saturday, so that was the that was the thing I was working on. So I was like, okay, let's do this. And I actually posted some of um, I, I run a Discord server for those streams, and you know, there's actually a big group of uh, people, a big community of people that join every single week. And, um, you know, so I'm posting all the references and all the tutorials that I'm following for mm -hmm. the stream That's cool. there. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we, we also do these weekly challenges every single week. There's a, there's a challenge, a prompt. It's kind of like a uh, inktober if you're into drawing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. but for rendering. So I do one every single week and announce the winners on the stream and, and select the new prompt at the end of that stream. But yeah, yesterday or not yesterday, last Saturday was the <laughs> looping animation, which, was tough, very difficult. Yeah, a whole different style of rendering, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like you have to, you have to plan far ahead. Um, be a if you're wanting to make a loop. Yeah, <laughs> a right? mathematician. Fibonacci sequences and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, lots of reference and lots of um, pre-planning, certainly of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to accomplish, versus just jumping in and randomly doing stuff. Uh, jumping over to the, the C4D side, I know, uh, the, uh, I, I know Ren in particular was a big Max guy for a while. Uh, I remember we were at NAB. It was the first time we met Ren and we convinced him to move over to C4D, you know? That's awesome. And I don't know if that's the way Not it was. Not just us. I whole, think it was just the whole, whole community yeah. of C4D yeah, people yeah, yeah. around him, like Ariev and everybody yeah. just... <laughs> You come know. on, come on, <laughs> come on! Everybody's doing it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. I, I, had you always been a, uh, a in C four D? Was that one of your starters? Because if you look at some of the earlier tutorials, you're showing off some C four D stuff as well. You know, yeah. I didn't know if if you had started there or whether you started somewhere else in three D and just moved moved into it. That was my first big one. Was C four D R ten? Um, wow! And I was on. <laughs> Wings 3D uh, was the first 3D <laughs> thing I ever jumped into when I was like, you know, at in high school um, at lunch, I would go <clears> to the <throat> library and just mess around in Wings 3D and create stuff, you know, like Legos uh -huh. basically. And um, but yeah, C4D R10 was the first big, um, you know, 3D software that I hopped into. And I actually I was doing tutorials on what is it? CGTuts.com yeah. way yeah. back in the day. And, you know, I got to the point where I was like, dang, all the good stuff is for 3DS Max. All the good tutorials are mm -hmm. for 3DS Max. And Sam and Nico were using 3DS Max. So was Freddie and Brandon. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to switch. I basically just got, I think it comes down to like, oh, what program should I use? What program should I use? If you have a whole bunch of friends in a community of people using a certain program, like probably not a bad idea to use that program. Uh -huh. um, right. At least in my experience, if you're solo, like if you're just running solo, like Blender is obviously a great option because mm -hmm. it's free and yeah. it, it's like you can just jump in and there's a big community. But yeah. for me, I kind of would just move between the programs that um, all the different creatives around me were using. So I started C4D, 
switched to 3ds max was in there for about six years learned a lot from sam and nico and brandon Mm -hmm. and then um yeah when ren came back from nab i think it was um he Mm -hmm. was like dude it's about c4d and then paul hooked everybody up with c4d explorer that's and smart. They converted Good us job. To... Good job, Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Worldwide. Yeah, no. He's awesome. Um, so nice. And dude, just everybody over there, like Matthias, they're and Rick, they're yeah. all great. Um but yeah, I got back in uh our is eighteen? I don't know. I've been in, I've been in for almost three years now, back in. Um and I love it. It's like a playground, a happy playground. The UI is great. It's just yeah, ah, mm-hmm. I wanna create stuff, you know. Yeah. And you yeah, were yeah. talking about that in your origin story video on on YouTube a little bit about Paul reaching out and, and all of that. Because it's like the, the Blender stuff, it's like, I get it. It's free. And it's great for some things. And the blend, But the Blender people, the cult of Blender is just, yeah. you, you don't have to prove that it's the best. Just use what right. you want to use. Like the video yeah. that we did on Render Engine, somebody the other day wrote, yeah, but is Arnold free? <laughs> no, Blender rules. Blender, Blender wins. And I'm like, <laughs> why does it have to win? Like, like yeah. it, it's like people talking about CrossFit. It's just like, right? Why? Why? Like, well, my theory, my theory is that um, a lot of the people who who use Blender are very young, yeah, and they have access to that. Um, but they have no access know. to money. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, but it's maybe, great that they can like, do that. It's great, yeah. but like the, the whole, the whole like there's something to prove thing is just I, I just beyond my understanding. Yeah, but that's why I, I, they're just young, you know. They're yeah. just yeah. they're in middle school. They're yeah. they're in high school maybe, and like that's what you're like when you're in middle school and high school maybe. Uh-huh. Um, so, I that's my theory, <laughs> and it's really like if if you're an adult and you're, you know, trolling about blender is the best blah blah blah. like then you know you still got we all have a ways to go we all got a ways to go <laughs> oh i see you're drinking coffee but water's free water wins water's the best yeah. <laughs> it's like haha all right is there you trying to be funny right now or are you being for real i can't tell but but in your video yeah, you you know. talked about a lot of uh, a lot of crazy topics like all over the place and you were talking a lot about your books and and the types of um the types of books that that you read, including one, and you're gonna to have to remind me the name of it about something something five a.m. Um, oh yeah, okay. The the five a.m. club. Five a.m. club. It, are you yes. are you getting up um, at five a.m.? I okay, so I shifted it right a little bit, so it's technically <laughs> the six a.m. club. So I'm getting up at five forty-five. Um, Same you know, here. like the Crypt Keeper. Like I'm just getting yeah. up with this, like. You know, and then I have to like do a couple, a couple neck rolls and wake up, and then 6 a.m. you're into a workout. Basically, is the idea. Ooh, um, no, thank you, man. <laughs> it's intense. Sorry. It's super intense. But like, <clears throat> yeah. So I'm really into self help books, and I'm really into just learning and being the best version of myself that I can be. Um, I find it very satisfying. I love a good challenge. And again, martial arts background. It's like you got to work yeah. hard. You have to be disciplined. And I truly feel that patience and discipline is something that are, we're going to lose as we go forward into the future here rapidly. Mm-hmm. And I need to hang on to those things. I have yeah. to hang on to those things. And I know that the hard work will pay off. And the 5 a.m. club book just basically talks about putting, if you're talking about like video games, right? Um, you want to put skill points in the right areas and you want to make sure you're putting skill points into certain specific areas that, you know, that get you the furthest. So it's going to be physical health, mental health. Um, they break it down. Yeah. was it, uh, health set, soul set, heart set and mindset. And the first 20 minutes you're into a workout to wake you up Mm -hmm. like a sweat. You got to get a, get a sweat going. Mm -hmm. The, the second 20 minutes, of that first hour of your morning is spent either planning your day out journaling or meditating, Mm -hmm. um, or something like that. And then the last 20 minutes is spent learning. So if you can do, you don't have kids, do you? Not yet. (laughs) (laughs) yet. Sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) No, no, no. It, it, it it makes sense. I think I'll get to the point. I definitely want to have kids. I think it's going to be awesome to be a dad. I'm very excited about that. (laughs) <laughs> not yet though not anytime soon yeah um but i'm just hoping that i can 
can keep those disciplines and I'll go through waves. I'll go through moments where I like dip out, but I need to come back to it. And that dude, it just goes into other books I've read. Like uh, there's one called mastery about people get into certain things and they get really into those things, right? You'll get into golf. You'll buy the clubs. You'll get the bags. You'll get the freaking country club membership and you'll golf super hard for like three months. And then you just drop off. You never touch your clubs ever again. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've done it with like model the gym painting. membership. Gym membership. Yeah, whatever. Anything that you're like, yeah, let's do it. You get into it and then you drop off. And it's because, at least from the book, was talking about um, it's because we're all very addicted to like immediate gratification. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the idea of you're seeing yourself grow and get better at something. Like for me, it was rock climbing. I was like getting way good at rock climbing. And I got to the point where I like leveled out, I plateaued. And I was like, huh, I'm not getting that same fix that I got when I first started. And people drop off. I, I, I hadn't rock climbed in two years and I feel I, I'll get back to it. I will get back to yeah. it. But the point is you have to stick through the plateau. And maybe at the end of the year, you'll see a little whoop, little increase in skill. Mm-hmm. And you got to mm-hmm. ride the plateau out. And like the book's called Mastery. It's about how to become a master at anything. And and what it claims is that if you consistently do something for an extended amount of time and you put, you know, you're disciplined and you're patient with that, you're going to become a master. So I, tr- I truly believe that. So that's what I'm trying to do with the things I care the most about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you guys have done it with this podcast once a week for 251 episodes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's a long time. That's a long time. But I, I mean, I get frustrated when it comes to my my craft, you know, when it comes to like diving into Cinema 4D and stuff, because, you know, we'll end up doing a bunch of for the meal and not for the real stuff for quite a yeah. while. And then, you know, off to MoGraph stuff and traveling and doing live shows, and all this stuff. Before I know it, I haven't touched Cinema 4D in forever. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's like, and then you look online and you get that whole feeling when you get on Instagram and everything else and everybody's stuff is so awesome. And you're like, well, I'm getting left behind. Um, so That's try, tough. You know. the social media comparing yeah. yourself to others at their yeah. best. I see the stuff Ariev's doing and I'm like, well, <sighs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But Ariev's on another level. Like never compare you yourself to Ariev. <laughs> oh, you're talking about just, just his work. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Um, I've been uh, the last week. Uh, uh, I think we mentioned someone mentioned uh, the book, the subtle art of not giving an F. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and so I I bought it and I've been reading it. And you know, it's it, it's you're you're right about the self help stuff. Like I don't, I don't, I don't love certain self help things. You know, I feel like sometimes if you're reading a book about self-help like i all i I, every time i'm reading one i can't help but think back to the the brian griffin uh family guy episode where he writes a self-help book that's just total bs Mm -hmm. you know just to prove that he can do it you know and so i'm reading this book and it's like okay you're using the f word every other sentence and it's like okay i get it you're trying to be edgy Mm -hmm. you know just give me the important parts, you know, like give me some of the thoughts that I can take into account, you know, and the big thing that I've pulled from it is, you know, you need to care about the things that are really important to you in your life and not worry about all the other noise that's out there. You know, don't let the noise come in and, and start getting you, taking you away from the things that you're really supposed to care about, you know, I don't know. If you don't have a uh, any sort of foresight or thought into what's important versus what's not, you're gonna lose yourself. And um, there's there's another book called it's called Eat That Frog, and mm-hmm. the the idea is if you have to eat a frog today, how would you do it? And it, the answer is immediately as soon as you wake up, so that you can get <laughs> it over with. Right. Yeah. So basically, it's do the hardest thing, the most important thing, first, mm-hmm. and then. You know, it's the, the whole book is about how to schedule and prioritize um, and like save the stuff that other people can do for you last. Save the stuff that you shouldn't don't need to waste your time. Don't even do it. You know, like yeah. just focus on the important stuff. 
stuff that you should get done, stuff that like, what happens if I don't do this? What would happen? You know, do that stuff first. Um, right. But yeah. that, that's totally, I'm, so I'm, I've been, you know, trying to implement that into my, into my life over the last few months here. And it's, yeah, it's, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Which takes us to the social media stuff. Like you got off of Facebook, Twitter, you are on Instagram. But I, I like am on Instagram. Instagram. I'm a different. photographer and, uh, you know, it makes sweet renders from time to time. So I got to stay on like the visual social media, you know? And that doesn't but, yeah, feel I'm as much of a Facebook suck, and... you know, than that as than Facebook is, you know, with the the politics and the back and forth and the and the just constant just like scrolling the feed and it's just why am I mm -hmm. even looking at this? Yeah. In comparison. So. When you like open Facebook, no, no, you close Facebook and then you open it immediately. Yeah. You're like whoa, what am I? What am I doing? I gotta, I gotta go. It's been. Yeah. I haven't checked Facebook in a while. Oh wait, no, I just, I just closed it. Yeah, I get yeah. that a lot. <laughs> Now what do I do? Check yeah. Facebook. Yeah, that's why I like TikTok. Everything's so different every time. I can just yeah. lose myself for seven hours and five minutes according to my screen time oh. every day. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's your guys' screen time? Let's compare screen time right now. <laughs> it's it's seven hours and five minutes. I got I that yesterday. Really? See, I took yeah, Facebook but it's not, off my phone. It's not so. TikTok. So today, today I'm at five hours and 54 minutes, and I haven't, you know, surfed my phone uh, an hour of that is Reddit. An hour of that is TikTok. Okay, yeah. 43 minutes is Safari, which I really hope that's not Facebook. 43 minutes is Skype. Okay. Yep. Oh, See, not Skype. Slack. I mean, Slack. I've got three and a half hours, but 52 minutes of that was Waze because I have my GPS on my car. Oh, right, so right. A couple yeah, hours. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's not too bad. Yeah. Where's the Where's the seven-day OC all activity? Uh, week. I don't know. So mine says three and a half minutes, uh, three and a half, or sorry, three hours, seven minutes, but that's just over the last two days. Um, do you I feel like the seven day one? Yeah, well, screen time, total screen time this week, just for the two days, is 11 and a, 11 and a half hours. And yesterday was busy. I spend <laughs> a lot less time after deleting the Facebook app, because I'll tell you the, the Facebook doing Facebook on Chrome on an iPhone is just an absolute. Yeah. It's, crap awful. Show. it's awful. Yeah. So it's not even, it, it forces yeah. you to See, not like it. <laughs> TikTok so. and Reddit are my big things. You know, yeah. that's what I spend most of my time on. Got you. hours of blender today. Yeah. <laughs> but the, awesome. the reason Wait, I'm asking, cause you've not been... even possible. Yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> Is, but Come you've on, been you off of me. Facebook for like three years, so that's got to feel nice. Yeah, I just don't have to worry about it. Like, do you? I don't have to. Do you, do you ever? Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. I do that a lot, according to some of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> remember it. Remember, remember that. Not, right. not what you just said, but what you're about to say. Right. All I was gonna say is that yeah, I hadn't touched Twitter in like six years. I hadn't touched Facebook in like three years. Um, I recently took Gmail off my phone. Really? And, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is nice. It's very nice. It's peaceful. Hmm. Um, when when I'm working, I'm on my computer. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. I I don't need Gmail in the morning. I don't need Gmail at night. I just need it when I'm working. I don't need Gmail on the weekends. Like I'll check it if I need to, or I'll install Gmail if I'm if I'm traveling. But mm -hmm. I just it's been interesting. Yeah, like there's been times where like ah, I'd be nice to have it, but it's like. Well, I don't need it right now, so it's been cool. Just Instagram and uh, Discord to check in on my mm -hmm. VFX community, but yeah. Do you ever feel like out. you like? I I don't know. Like I I check Reddit. You know, I read the Reddit news and stuff. You know, you go to Facebook for your fake news. Do you ever <laughs> feel like? Do you ever feel like? Like, you're you're just not. For me, it, it it's like I don't I don't I get FOMO. You know, mm. I want to know what's going on at all times. I want to know what I'm supposed to be mad about, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, do you ever feel like maybe you're 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 missing something, you know, or like you're missing out on something, I should say, on some important news or something that you need to know, you know, that's a good question. Because um, if you say no, I'll delete all my crap right now. So I. <laughs> I um <laughs> I know that sometimes when I ghost uh -huh. and I'm like 
working on my thing and focusing on my thing, I actually get excited missing out on stuff. Yeah. There's a feeling inside that I feel where it's like, oh, did you see my feed? Did you see my thing? And I'm like, no, I didn't. And I'm like, <laughs> there's a part of me that's like, that's cool. I like that, you know, because I know that I'm focusing on the things that are important that I need to be focusing on and working mm -hmm. on. Um, and if it's important enough, I'll hear about it, you know. Right. You know, I'll hear about it. If so, like, if someone drops some big thing, like I'll I'm, I'll check in from time to time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, but if I don't know, I, I've been muting a lot of people on Instagram that don't. Like, I don't want to pity follow anybody. Right. It. It's just a waste. Like, why? It's like keeping up. You're an acquaintance, you know? Like, this kind of sounds a little harsh. Um, <laughs> but if I'm going through Instagram and I'm just scrolling past stuff, then I'll either unfollow you or I'll just mute you. Like, the mute is interesting because it's like, why don't you just unfollow? It's like, well, it can be awkward. Right. Yeah. If it's like a friend and you enjoy spending time with them, but you don't enjoy their posts or they don't mm -hmm. do anything for you. Or it's like, right. dude, I know you so well. Like I don't need to see this cause I already know it. Then I'll just mute and right. simplify. Like I'm honestly, I'm just trying to simplify and be as minimalist as possible in all areas. Um, it just, I think it's easier for me. Um, there's not as much noise. Background How many people noise. on Instagram do you follow? I think it's like 200 or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, like that. It's yeah, not. Yeah. It's not anything small or anything. It's just. It's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the thing is that I think we you talked before the show. Neither of you have seen the social dilemma on Netflix mm -hmm. yet. No, no. You keep pushing it on me. I'm. I am telling you that every person <laughs> in the world needs to watch this, and it's. It's because the first thing that everybody's going to think is, "Oh yeah, they're ad tracking you." Blah blah blah. But you don't know how deep it runs, and that the AI. Mm -hmm. There's no person controlling this. There's no person that's purposely doing this. The AI has reached the point to where in order to maximize profits, it's pushing us against each other and it is not compatible with democracy. And mm -hmm. and that is why we're heading the way that we are and it is so eye-opening that and it, and it's, you know, it's funny cuz I posted something on Facebook about it ironically. Like right. everybody needs to watch this, you know, and everybody's talking mm -hmm. about it and they're like it's funny that we're talking about it on Facebook. I'm like, right, but it, it hits different. Like yeah. it, it, it's, it, there's something, something happened to me. Like I took the red pill or something all of a sudden. Oh, I see what this is about. And my just giving a, a, an F whatever has just kind of fallen away all of a sudden. And I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, even at the end of the documentary, they're talking about the fact that everybody needs to know this information. This is like the single most important thing humanity is facing. And you don't really mm -hmm. think that it's that important, but when you, uh, the second half of that doc especially gets so good and it's so well put together and it's so well explained that I just oh, have to keep right, pushing dude. this. You have to watch this. And and there's some cheesy moments and whatever they do like kind of this drama, like the storyline to go along with it and the acting is you know okay or whatever. <laughs> but the content that you walk away with at the end, you're just like, I don't know what to think anymore about anything when you get to yeah. the well, What is it? Like, what, 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 is, what stuff do you get into? It's, okay, it, it starts with the usual stuff. Like, you understand ads and how all of that works, right? And, and mm -hmm. you run Targeted ads marketing and stuff. All yeah. of that, right? But then it comes down to, like, the AI really s concentrating on what you're looking at when you're on the internet. How long do you mm -hmm. stop on a picture and why? And right. and if you haven't responded in a while, what is it going to throw you? Have you ever been on, well, probably not lately, but have you ever been on Facebook and you start muting friends that post, let's say, yeah, let's yeah, say yeah. that you, let's say that you are, are left and you don't like Trump and all you, you have some Trump supporters that start really going off about how much they love Trump and you mute those people. Okay. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, people out of the woodwork that you haven't seen in your feed in two years that are Trump supporters start appearing. Well, why is that? Well, that's because the algorithm and the AI knows that that is going to drive your engagement because somebody's going to post how much they love Donald Trump and you're going to be like, no, no way. He, like, why would you? And you're going to get 
involved in that again. And you're going to mm-hmm. comment. And it even goes into stuff when it comes to like photos. When somebody tags you in a photo, it doesn't show you the photo. It says you have been tagged in a photo. Why? Well, because you want to know there's a picture of me. What is it? And you're going to open up your app and you're going to go to it. But then the algorithm starts realizing, hey, well, you've, you've got to drive profit somehow. And how do you get that engagement? Well, you got to get this group over here that's hardcore to the right and this one hard to the left. It's dividing us up in such a way in order to maximize ad revenue for large corporations. That's what the AI is designed to do. It's like poisonous. And, mm-hmm. and, but the thing is that it is, it is evolving on its own. Nobody is doing this on purpose. It's just getting so good that it's controlling every aspect of how we feel, what we do every day, turning us into these drones that are just pushing money for corporations. And when you realize that that is where we're headed, that we're just like just drones for AI, you're like, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. There's um. <laughs> Hold on, let me go. A... Let me go mention how much that sucks on my Facebook. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a really crazy article on a website called Wait But Why. Have you guys heard of this? I think it sounds so. familiar, actually. They did one on AI. It was like a two part one. It's su- it was a really long article. It took me like a week to read. But it breaks down, you know, AI and how it works. There's like general AI, and then there's there, there's um, there's like three different ones, and then the third one is super intelligence, which we're not at yet, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But some some scientists say that we're gonna get there in our lifetime. Others mm-hmm. believe uh, maybe not, maybe maybe they'll, it will just miss it or something. Um, but it talks about how crazy and how dangerous and how unknown. It really is and how far it can go so basically like if we if we're here it's like it's a big step ladder right and like we're here then you just a, a step down is like uh you know, like prime apes or something and then the ai is going to go whoosh, way up that ladder it's just mm-hmm. gonna take off and we're not even gonna know what happened like we're yeah, just gonna, right. it's gonna leave us in the dust and we don't know what it's going to do if mm-hmm. and when I truly believe yeah, when it becomes sentient, it's going to like, it's going to get crazy and no one knows what's going to happen. That's why like Elon Musk is all like, it's very dangerous. We might as well merge it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's his, that's his thing. I don't, yeah. I don't know about I merging. I don't, it, I don't love Elon. Speaking of which, can I just say, everyone loves Elon. nobody is talking Elon. about this video that he put up on YouTube, this live real episode of black mirror that's on the internet almost that you can watch no how is nobody talking about this this is like three weeks ago the he pig, does this, the the pig thing. thing he does this neural link demonstration yeah. and shows how they'll put the electrodes in your head and he's talking about the whole thing and there's people there watching and then he brings out these pigs live and shows like how the implants are in their head and like the pig is sniffing hay on the ground and it's re- and as it sniffs you see the responses and you hear this noise like every time he sniffs because that's what his brain is receiving i watched this thing and i was like how is this real life right now it scared the crap yeah. out of me they um that same website wait but why they have an article on neuralink and how it works and mm-hmm. it breaks down like how the brain works and how, how far we've come up till now and what neuralink is trying to do and it, it's insane. Like we, we, the hit that the Neuralink is basically like temporary, not temporarily, but, um, immediately Neuralink is going to help people, you know, get their limbs back, um, mm-hmm. get usage of certain parts of the brain that have died out. It'll mm-hmm. help people that need it to, to survive and function. Yeah. But then when it becomes like, oh yeah, let me just buy that to like upgrade myself that will be a thing and he's Mm -hmm. i think in one year he said it will test on humans in 10 years we might see it come out and be like a a thing with people um it's very very scary like i came from a religious background you know i was Mm -hmm. i was uh raised christian we went to church every single week and they talk Mm -hmm. about like the mark of the beast (laughs) um you know implanting this chip that that uh, it's the only way that you can, um, you know, make payments, get payments, um, buy stuff. It's the only way it's like it has all your data on it. And like, mm-hmm. it's just kind of scary that like the Bible talks about that stuff. Mm-hmm. And 
people try and say, oh, that's this, that's going to be this. That's going to be this thing. That's going to be that thing. Yeah. But it is just very interesting to me, and it just seems very, like, not chill, putting some, putting some <laughs> yeah. chip in, in me that is going to dictate, yeah. like, oh, sorry, you can't buy this food because you don't have, like, you don't have Apple Pay? Sorry, we don't we don't take cash. Right. You know, yeah. it's like, ah, that's weird. It's starting to get, like, I don't know. From From a writer standpoint, I love that stuff. Right. I love that stuff. It's, like, very juicy when it comes to, like, sci-fi craziness. Um, it's very dramatic and mysterious. So I, I'm, I'm very intrigued and I'm excited to be alive right now because it's going to get crazy. And we don't, yes. we don't know what the long-term effects are. And we're the, the last generation, because as they put in that Netflix special or whatever, we have millions of years worth of evolution behind us. And it takes mm-hmm. a really long time to even evolve that much. But in front of us is a screen that is constantly evolving at an exponential rate and we're not able to adapt to that but we're the last generation that remember is going to remember what it was like before that connectivity and um unless we decide that we're going to make some sort of effort to move backwards we're going to move forwards (laughs) so yeah and we're not moving backwards i don't see that i don't see us being like you know what let's put the brakes on yeah all this i don't see that I'll be interested to see what people if, if you if you watch it, you know, anyone listening, if you watch it, I'll be interested to hear your take on it. You know what you think, you know, send us some send us a, a, a ironically something on the <laughs> Internet. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, but I, I think we need to disconnect a little bit for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it, it will make you feel better, especially if you're trying to concentrate on your craft, if you're trying to get better at. Mm-hmm. cinema 4d or whatever i sat down and i disconnected and i got in front of cinema this week and i made a little thing just for fun and it felt good it feels yeah. good bro yeah clint what uh uh what martial arts were you did you study uh the first one was shunin do which is an okinawan japanese style second one was uh was kempo which i believe is a chinese pretty sure i might be wrong on that chinese style and then kung fu of course that's you know nice chinese um so those were the those were the three that i studied for about from nine to 19 wow right when i moved back out to california is when i you know i i, I want to get back to it i definitely yeah. want to get back to it and i i probably will um mm-hmm. at some point i, I kind of go through circles of hobbies um mm-hmm. But yeah, I, do you guys practice or did you practice with your kids? My, when I was my, a kid. <laughs> my son is uh, in Taekwondo. So Dude. he's a he's a brown belt, advanced brown belt in Ooh. Taekwondo. So and he's only, he's only 7. So I think it's he's very been important. in since he was 3. That's so cool. You know, that's that's great. I think a lot of kids need that. Um, mm-hmm. it taught me a whole lot. It taught me um, respect and discipline, mm-hmm. um, self-care work hard um and you you make some really good friends yeah um in it as well like it teaches you it teaches you a lot of great life goals i think everyone needs i think everyone would benefit from from a martial arts class i agree i agree have you watched cobra kai (laughs) oh boy i okay so i have i only have like 20 minutes worth of an opinion on that i saw the first 20 minutes (laughs) and i'm like God, this acting is so bad. Oh, it's so bad, but it's so good too. Oh yeah, I stopped after twenty. I mean, I I didn't put it on my girlfriend or fiance at this point. She put it on. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited. Um, and yeah, it was. I was just like, what? No. You, you 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 get past it. You get past it. You know. But why though? Like, why put yourself like why? Like what? It's, it's fun. It's fun. It's like a, it's a fun '80s flashback, you know. It's true. It's true. But I'm just like I'd rather play Smash Bros. or like, (laughs) you know, play Rocket League or something. Right. But I, yeah, I get it. I know people really like it. It's cool. So uh, tell us about what you got coming up. What's the next thing? Yeah. That you can talk about. Okay. So um, I'll talk about myself and I'll talk about Corridor. So for for me. Let's see. What do I got? I got a, uh, what is it? 
compositing for colorblind artists. Oh, oh yes. Uh, there you go, Dave. Mm -hmm. I need yeah, that. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just a quick tip, you know, just a little quick tip that I learned um, way back. Uh, basically, just go into the black and white channels, go into the individual channels mm -hmm. and color correct based off of uh, contrast and, you know, combine them all together. And you'll get pretty friggin' close. If you can use the hue, saturation, lightness info on the top right of After Effects, you can get there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just like a quick tip. Um, and then I also, I interviewed nine different people. I got David Aryev. Uh, I got Beeple, um, Devin Supertramp, uh, Ian Hubert, um, Blender Guru, Nice. Um, How'd you get a hold of him? He won't. He won't answer our question. Our, he won't be on our show. We've asked him. Yeah. Did he say no? Or he did said he yes, and then he said yeah. no. Yeah. I said sorry, I don't oh. have time. Oh, I mean, he, well, he, you know, he owns Polygon, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. He well, he actually came down to be on VFX Artist React, so I had like a face-to-face -face connection with him, and then he was on uh, the Corridor podcast. And uh, I follow him on on Instagram and, and love the art that he's putting out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I guess it, I, I don't know. <laughs> so you COVID, you him our way. Tell him we're, we're, yeah. we want to have him on the show. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. But yeah, I, so basically, I interviewed all these different people, and there's some others. And I asked them, hey, do you have a certain folder structure? or file management mm -hmm. nice. kind of situation in place. How do you organize your files? How do you organize your folders to maximize efficiency? And each person had a, um, their own way of doing things. Because mm -hmm. my goal is to rehaul my current folder structure so mm -hmm. I can be as efficient and creative as possible. Mm -hmm. um, Dave does and, his folder structure differently than I do. So anytime he starts a project first, <laughs> I always have to work within his folder structure. And then whenever I start a project first, I They're work similar. within mine. They're similar. Yeah. They're slightly that's funny. Similar. That's that's such a that's such a thing. Like if you guys were married, that'd be like, ah, <laughs> why don't you do it this way? It's like, because why don't you do it my way? You know, it's like, like <laughs> tiny things like that. That's mm -hmm. funny. Um, but yeah, like the, the theory is we're constantly going for certain files and assets all day long mm -hmm. and if we could just click once to get the file that we want mm -hmm. we're going to save so much time yeah. um so there's been a bunch of different ideas from all these different guys and i'm going to put together like a deep dive video tutorial on that that'll probably be a little later this year um mm -hmm. i'm going to do one on surface imperfections there's how to make a your own and stuff. Uh, uh brett morris from ranger and fox do you know brett no you should talk to him um, cause oh, we've, that's right. cause he's got a very specific folder structure, like one that we've actually talked to him about implementing across the board as like an industry standard, you know? Yeah, you talk oh shoot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What is so, his name? Brett Morris, Brett Morris from Ranger and Fox. Ranger and Fox. He's presented oh. for Maxon lots of times. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I we can send I'm, it to you after the show. Yeah, I'll send we'll, it to you. We'll show. stay on the line Perfect. for a second after. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so you're doing one on surface imperfections as well. Is that a substance thing or? No, it's it's just whatever program you use. Um, oh, okay. Just basically, what I'm gonna do is bust out the ink, bust out some paper, get some glass. We're gonna make nice. our own. Oh, That's how okay. to do it from scratch, and like we'll do ones with scratches. We'll do one with rain. We'll do smudges, fingerprints, and how to process it in Photoshop, bring it into whatever program you're using and take your, your texturing game to the next level, basically. That's cool. Um, so I'm just excited to do it from scratch. Like that's going to be cool. Yeah. It's going to be a cool learning process. We should have you so come out to year. Camp MoGraph and do that live oh, with everyone. Like That'd be fun. Oh my God. Oh, that's man. a good idea. Yeah. So I, I went to the website. I'm not like I. I want to do it. I want to yeah. come to one of these things so bad. Like you guys don't even know. It's so much fun. I love as camping. I happen. love outdoors. <laughs> like yeah. Once it happens, finally. Yeah. I'm Which, so uh, in. Uh, uh, side note: um, We've been talking to the uh, camp counselor since NAB uh, coincides directly with our our camp dates. Uh, we're looking yeah. at changing it to. 
I think mid September of yeah. next year. Yeah. So I think I think the weather will be a lot nicer there. We might be able to swim in the creek, you know, and not be too cold. Um, and uh, it'll it'll be nice. It'll be super nice. Yeah, that would be really oh fun God. if we could do a surface imperfection like you know yeah. IRL. Yeah. Yeah. I would be so down. Like yeah. that sounds like a dream. How long do you go for a week? Uh, we're there from we're there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then everyone leaves Sunday. So it's three full days, you know. Yep. And then there's there's workshops just Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. Dude, that that would be, I can't even like I can only <laughs> say it would be a dream to be uh-huh. there. Like, cause everyone who like, I I mean I love David, um, mm-hmm. and I I'm a big fan of EJ. Mm-hmm. And really, I really want to get to know him a little bit better because I think he seems like a really chill guy, um, very down to earth. Uh, so that that would just be incredible to be a part of all that and learn with you guys and like just get a little bit closer and have a good freaking time. Like, and yeah, just go out kayaking or swimming time. or work out, you know, whatever. Dude, mm-hmm. next time we go to Colorado and meet up with everybody, you should meet up with us. That'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. yeah Let me know. Go. Let yeah. me know. I'm there until COVID <clears throat> felt like we were doing that a couple times a year. So, right. Yeah. So anything else coming up we need to know about? So that that's me on my channel. Um, I'm, I'm trying to learn unreal, um, put out some unreal content. So I'll be watching Winbush's uh, yeah. MoGraph class when that drops. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a date release date for that yet? Dave, is there a date? I Are we announcing any date yet? I am yet? planning to soft launch next Sunday. If everything according to yeah. plan, yeah, yeah, got got cool, a lot cool. of work to do this week, but we're, we're gonna yeah. get there. So, yeah. So that's that's my goals for this year. Um, as far as corridor goes, we are actually doing. Um, corridor just released a website, and it's a membership service where people can. I think it's like three, four bucks a month, something like that, and you get points with the site. Uh, it's corridordigital.com, I believe. Oh. Oh, it's just on the site. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and basically you get, you get points every month with your subscription and you put those points towards shows that you want to see. So, um, we've had most of the shows that we've had available for launch, like basically backed Mm -hmm. and, uh, tomorrow, you know, I actually finished my outline for uh, a tutorial series that we're going to be doing. So it's called functional filmmaking and Nico has got a class on cameras and how to make anything look good through any camera. Cool. Um, uh, Ren has got one on like his science videos, basically um, visually uh, explaining a, a complicated thing. You know, so he's gonna talk about mm-hmm. that. Mine is going to be on how to make photo real 3D VFX. So I'll take like a, you know a GameCube controller. And I'll recreate it one to one exactly in 3D, you know. Cool. So it's gonna be like, you know, just perfect kind of a thing. And then, uh, what else? Sam's gonna do one um, potentially on directing. We're still figuring it out. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, Nick is gonna do one on storytelling, how to turn anything into a story. So rock on. Nice. That's what we're working on right now. Um, got cool. a lot of cool stuff coming out. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Dude, y'all have the motion capture hoodie. We've been talking <laughs> about doing that forever. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good one. That's one of our like favorite ones. It's funny. Um, we we want to do the the last segment here called MoGraph recommends, but uh, first I wanted to hit up some links, and we only have two of them. Uh, number one, I don't know if there's much to say about this, but the you know the Quest Two was announced, and mm-hmm. I'm interested in it. And I, I yeah. still enjoy having the one connected to the computer, but I, you know, sparked my interest. It's a good price. It's yeah, available. it is a good mm-hmm. price. What is what's the price on it right now? Three ninety nine. Three hundred. Three. I think it's two ninety nine for the sixty four gig and three ninety nine for the two fifty six. I think. Bad. Can I play Half Life Alex with it? I don't know. If you have the connector cable, probably. But man, Half Life Alex, oh my gosh, I got back into it this week. It is so immersive. It is just the best. Yeah. I was talking to, I need to uh, buy it. Don Allen about it today. We were in a, a Skype call, and I'm like, dude, like, 
because I don't think he's played it yet. And I was like, man, you get lost in there. I was lost in there the other day, like going around mm. these corners with my flashlight and my gun, making sure I had enough ammo because ammo can be a problem in there. You got to mm-hmm. be real careful with it. That's and great. You got to like, well, you have superpowers. You pick up the ammo, but you have to put it in. You got to, you know, cock it and everything. And if you don't do that quick enough and somebody, some aliens coming toward your head, you can get freaked out really quick. But mm-hmm. it's just so immersive. It's just, it's just, if, if there's any game in VR I could recommend, it would be that game. Yeah. For sure. But if you I have wanted, yet to get yeah. into VR, um, I, not for any particular reason. I just, mm-hmm. there's nothing out there yet that grabs me. I think Half Life Alex is the first thing. So mm-hmm. yeah. I know I'll play it eventually, for sure. You have but you to think have the Oculus or the, the yeah. Quest 2 is, uh, is a good one to go with? It, the resolution is just so good, and if you have the ability to plug into a computer, if you want to, I think that's mm-hmm. a good way to go. Just because you know you can do the fun walk around the house stuff, sit at the beach and and you know play Beat Saber, but uh, yeah. you also have that ability to play the good games, and I think that's cool. a big deal. So Ren's a big Beat Saber guy, isn't he? Is he? Dude, he's like. Yeah. He, is he was like number one on the good. leaderboard at, yeah. uh, for one of these. Um, like wow. he, he hundred percent of the game got like the full rating on every single song, even the like super, super advanced, even on wow. like mm-hmm. the DLC. He has a beat saber <laughs> shirts. Like he's all about it. Jeez. Yeah. Man, I was just playing this afternoon, trying to go faster and faster and faster. See how fast I could go, you know, like 200% couldn't, mm-hmm. couldn't yeah. do it, but it was fun to try. You that's know. funny it's a good workout man i burned 900 calories yeah. on it today heck yeah yeah a little sweaty headset but <laughs> um but there's a link i put in the show notes and i like some of the what do you call it the mixed reality capture stuff you can do with it i think it's i've been trying to do this version where you have to hack all this stuff together but it looks like there's stuff coming where you can automatically do that you know especially if you have green screen or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. Nice. but, um, to be able to like play beat saber and be in it with a green screen and broadcast that online or do something, you know, whatever you want to do with it. I think that's fun. And, um, but check out this video. It's, it's, it's a link to a video where they had like seen the leak. Cause this was leaked way early. All the Facebook yeah. videos, everything came out yeah. leaked. Um, and then the other video that leaked. I have is, yeah, well, mm-hmm. The other video I have is one it was about autofill. Matt, yeah, you were like really auto hype on this. So this is a new plugin that came out uh, at AScripts. So if you go to ascripts.com slash autofill, this is a killer plugin. Like uh, one thing I love about AScripts is that you can try all these plugins before you actually purchase them. Mm-hmm. You know, and so like I tried it this weekend. And I was going to, so there's this one project that we're working on where I was going to have to go through and manually like stroke reveal all this stuff at the same time. And I tried autofill and it worked for me like that. Like, oh my God. So you start with like the final and then it fills it? Kind of. So you work with, uh, it works with the, uh, the alpha layer. You know, so you just tell it where you want to start and how big the the radius is, and it almost like it, it it's almost like the 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 algorithm that they're using. It's almost like pouring water to where it just fills it. You mm-hmm. know, and it's so so cool. So if you've got like multiple layers and stuff, you can do it all at once in like no time. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So. It is absolutely insane how good it works. Like it feels like cheating because you would be using masks and stuff. Otherwise, you know, just trying to fake it. Yeah. Yeah. Works really well. So I, uh, I, I've been playing ghost of Tsushima. Uh Um, and they have these cut scenes that look like it's like, uh, an ink brush just kind of blotting down and filling out these really nice, incredible drawings. And it looks like this. It looks exactly yeah. like this. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. It is it is great time saver. It is so worth the forty bucks for the the plug in. So yeah. I would definitely recommend anyone pick this up. Yeah, for sure. Does it work <laughs> with 3D? I don't know. I don't know. 
I mean, uh, I don't know how you would go about it. Yeah. But... <laughs> I mean, if there's an alpha channel, it'll work, you know? Yeah, this is awesome. It, it, it takes a 2D image, and as long as it's got an alpha channel, then it'll work. You just set a, you can set how however many, like, start points you want, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So you can do up to five start points, you know? And then it just fills in from those points. Heck yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a really cool plugin. Well, let's go to MoGraph Recommends. I can, yeah. uh, if you want, I can try and see if my microphone works again. Let's see. Let me see. Is it? Hello, you are hearing me talk. Is it still doing nope. that? No. Nope. Oh, man. Nope. <laughs> I get, you know, like, oh, man. It's whatever. I, I hate when intermittent problems like that happen because it's so hard to recreate and figure out why it does right. what it does. But it's right. only it's only on Skype. But I mean, the so fact that whatever. you figured it out, that like you can just switch back to, yeah, you know, to my, your webcam, webcam mic, it's and that's for just for us. Nice. Yeah. So we're going to do MoGraph recommends. We're going to ask you some of your favorites, and these can be favorites that are like current favorites, or they could be favorites that are all time. It's whatever. Whatever you want to recommend. And we're going to start out, though, with your favorite movie. My favorite movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> why? There's like a million. Um, you can give us a few if you want, a handful. Okay. One one that I can always go back to is Shaolin Soccer. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Stephen Chow is one of my favorite directors of all time. So that movie is just so so much fun and so dumb. I love it. Um, <laughs> the Matrix. Yeah. Okay. Saving Private Ryan. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, what do you think of the fifth element? I think a lot of people either love or hate it. Mm hmm. No, fifth element <laughs> rocks. Fifth element, fifth element is great. Um, Chris Tucker in the fifth element <laughs> is the greatest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Ruby Rod? Is that his name? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. So good. Um so good. Carbon Dallas. Yeah, you is crazy? that your guys' favorite? <laughs> That's one of my favorites. It's not my favorite. It's one of mine. It's up there. Yeah. Uh oh, Flux is going crazy on me. Hold on, let me <laughs> My favorite is uh uh I've got two favorites. It's a big extreme. Um basketball, uh <laughs> Trey Parker, Matt Stone, <laughs> and uh yes. Requiem for a Dream. Oh so nice. That yeah. Nice. Requiem makes me that's a, you gotta have a contrast yeah. right yeah yeah you gotta that's a hard one to, to walk away from when you're done you're just like it oh, is I um, feel sad it's so good it's so good the book the book is just as good I, I feel like the book did a little bit more justice basketball no no <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, Requiem <laughs> for a Dream Requiem for a Dream gotcha <laughs> gotcha you, got you. Um, uh, the book did a better job at like explaining the uh the 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 mothers like her her like it's all about addiction you know every single person's journey was all about addiction mm -hmm. and hers was you know looking nice for the television show and addiction to television and stuff like that and uh they talk about like when she goes to this you know mental ward or whatever one of the doctors is just like no, she's just she's kind of strung out. She just needs some food, you know. Crazy. You need to stop. She's she's strung out on all these pills and stuff. You need to you need to just stop. But there was politics going on within there within the 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 hospital, where it's like, no, you need to you need to step back. We're gonna do it our way, you know. And she ended up becoming a victim because of that. I don't know. It's whatever. The movie's excellent. I think I think uh, uh, Darren Aronofsky. He's my he's my favorite, absolute favorite. You know. Anyway, go ahead. Any any other movies on your list? Oh boy, uh, Lord of the Rings. Um. Uh, God, which ones do I own? Um. <laughs> Jeez, there. Yeah, I don't know. There's so many good ones. Uh, Rush Hour is a perfect movie. Mm -hmm. Terminator Two is a perfect movie. <laughs> Terminator Two was a perfect movie. Like not a wasted minute. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect. It is perfect. Um, yes. Anything James Cameron does, Titanic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, what is it? True Lies. <laughs> True okay. Lies was good. That was good. Um, 
Did you like Avatar? No. (laughs) (laughs) Smurfs. Everything minus Avatar. It's fine. Avatar's fine. It's fine. But it's not groundbreaking. It is groundbreaking, maybe technically, but it's not like I I I wasn't blown away like I am Mm -hmm. with his other with his other stuff, you know. Yeah. That's funny. And what about uh, music? All right, all right. I like like to put this out there and say your favorites slash what you like to listen to while you're working if you listen to music while you're working. Yeah, so I actually have an ambient for VFX and editing playlist. Okay. uh, Is it on Spotify? Can you share it? Yeah, totally. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, I'd love to get a hold of that. Yeah, um, let me, I'll pull it up right now. But basically, (laughs) it's just like I love ambient music so mm-hmm. much it puts me in a place immediately it gets me in the in the vibe in the zone um when i write it's like it's it's right there you know it's immediately putting me in a different world i'm transported um so i listen to about half the music i listen to is ambient music right um and then the other half is like random stuff like i love uh porcupine tree prog rock i'm a huge fan i'm a drummer mm-hmm. myself so um absolutely incredible masterful musicianship there uh radiohead i'm a, i mm-hmm. love radiohead um what else uh there's a band called elbow that i'm a huge fan of How do I know uh elbow? mute math oh i love mute math man i used yeah. to i would go see mute math back my friend was like their manager like their road manager and they were playing like little bars we're talking like 20 people and we would see them oh my the god they still had all the stuff heated. they would smash all the things and everything there's like 20 people yeah. there oh, yeah yeah man. no the drummer is crazy i've seen them like six times um <laughs> and he'd, he'd throw his his floor tom into the crowd he would <laughs> climb up onto his floor tom which was being carried by the crowd and then jump back onto the stage like they're just animals they're doing handstands on their keyboards and stuff and the the, mm-hmm. the music they put out is incredible they're they're so no longer weird. together but yeah um you know, just random stuff like a lot of random ambient uh, electronic mm-hmm. artists um, who do a lot of video game soundtracks, actually, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you guys? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're not important. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We don't talk about be like, because here. well, because we do this every <laughs> week, so we would just yeah. be saying the same thing. You yeah. know. Good um, point. Good point. But uh, okay, now this is assuming Kevin is watching this late. This is his time to shine he uh, was watching earlier you commented you're, earlier. <laughs> well you didn't he didn't comment about his favorites which he does every right week. Not yet. um but your favorite tv show currently or of all time uh, uh seinfeld in the office oh yeah they're good choices mm-hmm. good classic seinfeld. choices those are yeah, the office. always on like you just turn it on it doesn't matter what episode mm-hmm. you turn it on right yeah yeah, yeah. um uh, as far as like you know drama fictional drama goes i loved um god <laughs> what was the name of that show succession was it was it breaking bad or the wire no or the wire? no no no. <laughs> no, 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 no no um uh chernobyl oh yeah that was good there it is there it was it is. really good yeah. oh there he is <laughs> yeah. yeah breaking bad in the wire there you go oh man that's hilarious <laughs> Um, Breaking Bad is, was great. I'd never seen The Wire. Um, yeah, maybe I'll get to it in my lifetime. But yeah, uh, yeah Chernobyl was freaking incredible. And yeah. then mm-hmm. The Last Dance, that doesn't count as a TV show. That's a documentary, but that was good. SpongeBob. SpongeBob. SpongeBob's good. Yeah, it's I was going to say Avatar, The yeah. Last Airbender. Oh, man, I'm watching it for my yeah. first time right now. Dude, what season are you on? Uh, season one. Um, I just got to where um, um, they got to the North Pole and okay. um, uh, she found out that he was uh, the teacher or whatever was like in love with her grandma, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just yeah, got yeah. to that episode. You're so. at the end of season one. Yeah, um, just about. That That show is maybe, it's like the opposite of Lord of the Rings. Lord yeah. of the Rings, Lord of the Rings is really good, mm-hmm. and it gets better, and then it mm-hmm. kind of plateaus right at the last moment. Yeah. Um, but then Avatar just gets 
better. It just gets freaking better. And yeah. that show is like, it makes me feel so good to have that on. That's another show I just have on in the background is one of yeah. my favorites of all time. That's good. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, so many people have said positive things about it. That's the whole reason I put it on. And it, what's nice is my seven year old, like every time I put it on, he's like, Oh, I don't want to watch avatar. You know, he hasn't watched it all the way through, but we start mm -hmm. watching it for like 10 minutes and he is hooked. He does mm -hmm. not want to turn it off. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah. And it, it just, it, it gets so good. Um, Maybe I should watch that with my, with my daughter. Maybe you should. she'd yeah. be about a good age to get into it. How old? 10. Oh, let's go. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. put it on. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that it's made kind of a resurgence during COVID. I think people started yeah. getting into it. That's, you know, coming well, cause again. It, it was released on Netflix right. uh, yes. during the whole COVID stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. then there's the TikTok of the secret tunnel, you know, song, stuff like that. So there's that. I'm just I'm, waiting I, for that episode. I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm out of the. I'm out of touch with yeah, that one. Yeah, right. that's all right. That's all right. The kids with their ticking uh, in the talking. You know what? In the... You know what's another really good show that you can put on? Like I, I've actually done this on road trips. So uh, uh, Arrested Development is surprisingly good. Just listening to it by itself, yeah. Because you know everything that's going on, and since it's you know narrated. Meanwhile, meanwhile Tobias. Tobias. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's. Because it's narrated, you're you're able to like follow along pretty well. Interesting. Mm. I, yeah. That's another show that I've never seen. Um, <gasps> oh, put it on your list. Put it on your list. It's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I had an idea for a VR game called Meanwhile Tobias, and it's just <laughs> you're just wearing jean shorts, and that's the whole game. <laughs> funny. That's funny. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. The next thing on the list would be your favorite podcast. If you listen to podcasts, it's kind of a toughie. Mm -hmm. Dude, I listen to like, <clears throat> I listen to two podcasts. No offense. Um, <laughs> take it. And I just got into it. So uh, Joe Rogan podcast is the main one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stuff You Should Know. Those are the two. Yeah. Good choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I dig them. I dig them a whole lot. I've heard a whole lot about uh, hardcore history. And um, that's about it. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. – Got a, not, not, not the biggest library there, but that's, okay. that's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes – I mean, right now with COVID, I swear, like, podcast yeah. listenership in general is yeah, just our numbers, Yeah, our numbers have dropped quite a bit because people aren't commuting right now. Yeah. You know? Totally. It's hard. Yeah, totally. I, it's hard sense. for me to it's keep fine. caught up on mine. Like I, I only put it on mo for the most part you know, yeah. when I'm in the car and that's not as often anymore. So yeah, same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Are there yeah. two that you each, uh, each of you guys, if you were to recommend a podcast to me, what would you recommend? Um, uh, okay. So it's on our podcast network, the go gorilla podcast. I love that one. Okay, so, yeah. um, um, it's uh, uh, Paul Robinson and Sashia Dumont. Um, they're small indie filmmakers and stuff like that. And the reason we asked them to be on our podcast network is because I loved it so much. They talk about indie film. They talk about, you know, making their own films and stuff like that. And they've they've had a bunch of really awesome artists on as well. Mm -hmm. You should check them out. Definitely. Um, yeah, I'll do it. Let's see. And there's, I, I don't think there's, I don't think they're making, still making these episodes. What, but there's a really, really <laughs> stupid one that I listen to. It's like, I really only listen to, uh, to, uh, podcast when I'm like on a, on a flight since I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't do anything Paul's anymore. In the chat right now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, office ladies is really good if you yeah, like the office yeah that one about is great that. yeah yeah um watch the uh listen to that one my brother my brother and me is fantastic that's what i was gonna say my brother my brother yeah. and me is the best it's so yeah. wait is that is like the the three guys who drug yeah. about games and stuff uh yeah kind well of. Uh, they have a two of them have a game thing like they have all these other podcasts but the the original is my brother, my brother, and me. That's where it kind of Did started. Did they do a video on like Mass Effect face glitches? Yeah, that's that's called Monster Factory, and that's Monster two of Factory, the guys. Yeah. They do Monster Factory. I've okay. never laughed till I cried in my life until I watched <laughs> like the Bart Simpson one that they did. Oh my God, I was just losing it. Yeah. 
So um, Ashley and Anthony Birch, we work, we all worked together at Rocket Jump for five years, or no, for one year, and they showed me that, and like we were all on the ground just rolling, it's just so good. dying. Uh, Ashley and Anthony Birch, I, I so Anthony Birch actually worked with, he did um, a, a a game. It was a board game. Um, what was that? Um, I should know gosh. this. Yeah, it's a, a, a Russian roulette, or no, it's it, a world class Russian roulette or something like that. Okay, I, I think. But he worked with uh, he worked with uh, some friends of ours uh, at Tuesday Night Games. Oh yeah, um, okay. On that actual game, I believe. Nice. Yeah. World champion yeah. Russian roulette. World champion Russian roulette. Yeah. Yeah, yeah hey. Anthony is so freaking funny. That guy is hilarious. Yes, yes he is. Oh. Yeah, and Matt and I went to Broke see Borderlands too. Yeah, uh, we went yeah. to see my brother, my brother and me live. I mean, yeah, they've had some some great Lin Manuel Miranda has been on their show. Like it's it's just <laughs> it's just great. It's so Sweet. great, and they do a D and D podcast. The other one I would give as a is my number one favorite that I still listen to and try and keep up on is Back to Work with Merlin Man. Mm-hmm. That is a good show, and you can start at the beginning. <laughs> all right. right. You can start at the beginning. It's pretty good, I guess. It's all right. And um, and then Merlin also does a show with um, John Roderick. With John Roderick called Roderick on the Line, and some of his stories. Oh my god! Roderick on the Line is better than Back to Work, I think. You know, because of his storytelling ability. Yeah, storytelling's so good. John so Roderick's good. really good. Yeah, I'm yeah. checking out all these right now. Yeah, that's that's my recommendations. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> this awesome. is fun. For those who haven't known our favorites for a long time, yeah, ever since we introduced MoGraph recommends, right? So yeah, no, this is go. a good little little ending segment. I love this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, p- a plugin, your favorite plugin of all time. Mm-hmm. I mean, HDRI Link is pretty great. Yeah. A good one, yeah. Um, David Ariab told me about Magic Solo, which I love. Yeah, yeah. Um, Since they introduced the uh, the solo buttons in R twenty one, I haven't used yeah. Magic Solo that much yeah. anymore. I they confuse me. There's like three different ones, and I'm yeah. like, just give me a solo button. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh it's solo that solo hierarchy, and then turn the solo off and solo what I'm clicking on. Yeah. Oh, there is that one as well. I think I be- Do you? I think you can do that yeah, now. No. I don't remember. Maybe I just need to learn C4D. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anything else? Um, oh, I think the greatest plugin of all time is VC uh, Console. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Video Copilot Console. Yeah, that, that one's good. That's the greatest one of all time. Mm-hmm. That's just like that changed After Effects for me forever. Like yeah. the first thing I'll install before I install Chrome, VC Console. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I guess I have to install Chrome to get there, but right. you know, it's yeah. it's definitely number one on the list. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Kent says in the before times he listened to the podcast more than three hours per day commuting. Now he's like lucky to listen to one. I think that's I think that's the whole deal. Yeah. Yeah. Know? So <clears throat> uh let's see. What headphones are you into? Yeah, what are you oh. wearing? Yeah. Like oh, that's a those Great look question. like they look like jaw bones or is it, whatever. Is it bone conductive? They're bone conduction headphones. My buddy Young introduced me to these things, and at first I was like, eh. But I mean, since they've gotten so much better, I got hooked on the on the the first model. But mm-hmm. they're they're called bone conduction headphones by um, Trex Air. These mm-hmm. are the Aeroplex ones, and changed my life. Straight up changed my life. Um, I listen to ambient music. 24 7 on these things like i'm in the grocery store i don't have to listen to that crappy music i got these things and the best thing is like you can still hear your surroundings so you go for a nature nature uh walk and you put on ambient music some piano and you can still hear your surroundings and you get like full range with bass and everything it's like these things are are miracles i love i got a pair for my dad he's hooked he again like he works in retail He, he manages an office depot and he's got he's got his headset, he's got his face mask, and then he's got these on top. And he's like, I love them. I use them all day. 
They're so great. And people That's don't funny. know that you got head. I mean, they see them, but they're not thinking, oh, well, he's not going to hear me because he had <laughs> headphones on, you know? Hey, you could always just say yeah. it's your, your cochlear implant, you know? No, yeah, no, exactly. No, right? Or you could but get your, uh, your your uh, Elon Musk implant do that, too. <laughs> it does kind of look like a little, like, random little, like, tech thing right here. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I, I use these and then I use the uh, Bose. I think these are the Bose Heck like yeah. SL twos or three. I don't know what they're. There's, there's some Bose noise canceling headphones. They're great. I love these things. Yeah. Yeah, and it's safer to have those. Bograps.com brought to you by Bose, Bose. Quiet Comfort Thirty Fives. Buy them at your favorite. <laughs> Bose retailer. sponsor us. Yeah, every week it's Bose. Every week. The, they need to sponsor us. Their safety too. Like if you're going out running or biking or something like that outside and you've got the bone in conduction ones you know you can hear your yeah. surroundings and stuff better too you won't get hit by a car yeah exactly <laughs> um you know if you're running you can focus on your breath you can hear yourself you can mm -hmm. yeah they're they're just safer and they kind of mix everything together uh, oh when you're on set when you're on set you have these on and mm. you know you have ambient music on at a certain level so that when you're working you don't really hear it but if you have a moment of quiet, it kind of like comes into your like range, uh, you know, and you can just be like, ah, it does that and take a moment automatically. Like it's actually doing that or no, your, no, no, your no, mind no. just kind of feels that your mind. Yeah. Like you set it to a certain level where like, obviously you're not going to hear it if it's at a certain level and there's like buses driving by, there's a bunch of people talking, mm -hmm. you know, it's a loud environment and mm -hmm. you're in the office, there's meetings and stuff. And then you go, you know, to use the restroom or you go um, outside for a walk or for a ride. And then it just it comes it comes into your kind of like your your not not your field of view, but your. You know yeah, I know what say. you're saying. You can yeah. hear it. You know? I, I get yeah. it. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the word for that would be, but yeah. But it's nice. Yeah. It makes me feel at home and at peace when I got the music that I love on and that's peaceful music. And I'm just like, this is great. It just makes it makes everything better. If you're on a really beautiful hike, you put music on that that pairs well with the, the nature or the environment you're in. Like I love traveling. Right. So I love like different environments, foggy environments. And like I'll put on ambient music like Silent Hill soundtrack and I'll just go <laughs> and I'll feel like I'm in some other world. Mm -hmm. um, so when you pair the ambient music with these with the actual environment you're in, it's just the ultimate immersion. It's so good. Yeah. It's cool. Now, what about your go to app? What's your muscle memory? You don't have Facebook. You don't have Twitter. What's your muscle memory going to now? Mm, Instagram or mm. discord or trello probably trello yeah i love like getting the schedule lining up the things check mark did that yeah. did that did that all right mm -hmm. what do i got tomorrow get it ready like i love i love like being prepared um yeah. those are my three um podcast <clears throat> anytime i'm driving basically mm -hmm. um yeah that's probably it and that, that goes along the lines almost with what you were talking about in the morning, getting your stuff lined up, yeah, thinking about what you're going to do. I'm, I like to sit there and look at the to-do list and organize it. Okay, what did I not get to yesterday? Reschedule for today. Go down the list. Organize it. Bam. Got to do these four things right now, today. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I'm kinda, no, I, I feel blindsided yeah. when I don't do that. You know, yeah. I got to be on top of it. I yeah. don't use Trello, but I use Todoist, which, you know, close enough. Yeah, same deal. Yeah. And that brings us to our last question, which is going to be, and you're either going to have this right away or you, it's going to be really hard, is your favorite life hack. Favorite life hack. And we always use Mitch Myers. Oh, by the way, Mitch Myers has a new planet pack that I, for two episodes I've been meaning to talk about. He's got a new planet pack out. But Mitch Myers has his favorite life hack, which we use as the example, which is Turn your toaster on its side to make some bomb ass bomb ass grilled cheese. Oh snap, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh I I have two life hacks. Okay. I want to hear you guys holding on to. All right. Yeah, I, I um, want to hear it. I'll get two, ideas. One, buy yourself like a counter brush. All right. <gasps> so like a brush that you only use to wipe off the counter. Like right? crumbs and dust? Right here. Yeah, like crumbs and dust. No, right not here. like that. 
Like I'm talking, you know, like like oh, one that you would everything. use for like uh, for going into a broom or like a a, a, a whatever. No, much bigger than that, Dave. Oh. Well, so, but make sure you desk. only use it for the counter. Make sure you don't use it for like. But you can wipe off like a table or something like that, or and get into all the little crevices, and then vacuum after that. You're talking like one of these. Brushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like yeah, a like... big old toothbrush. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get one of those so that you can like, because that's what I do. Um, and buy yourself a. A Roomba. <laughs> the i7 Plus Roomba is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. iRobot that sponsor us. And the you know, what? iRobot sponsor us. iRobot sponsor us. Um, the i7 <laughs> Plus Roomba and the Brava M6 Mop has been the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. <laughs> I and I cannot I cannot stress this enough because. When you know you don't have to do those two steps, you actually work a little bit harder to like keep your house clean, or at least I do, right? Nice. It's like, nice. And, and so, like, I know I've got to do a certain amount of prep work in order to get the robot vacuum to work really well to do a good yeah. job. Like, for example, like, I'll brush everything off the counter. You know, and then I'll take all my chairs and do like you do in elementary school where you put them up, you know, onto totally. the table. So I'll do that with all that and I'll do that with all my bar stools and stuff like that. So I've got to make sure that all of it's clean first before I put those up. And then I just hit go and I let it go. I let it work for two hours, you know, and just mm -hmm. vacuum my whole house. And what's great is because since they're both made by iRobot, all I can do is say, all right, now mop directly after you're done vacuuming, you know? And so I've got, nice. you know, I've got sweeping, mopping, cleaning. It's all done. And or when I leave, I can set it to go. And it's just like, all right, when I get back, I'm getting back to a really clean house. You know, that's awesome. Like, you feel like you're being super productive when you're you not do. like you don't have to you, you don't do. have to waste time. Like and the amount of times that I have actually like it, it, this is sad. This is really sad. But like you can you can track the amount of times that you have uh, you have run the vacuum and I have run the mm. vacuum more times since I bought it than I have probably vacuumed in my entire lifetime. Nice. Yeah. That's great. That's a good and one. And it empties itself so you don't even have to touch it. You know, it just goes out and like poops in the backyard and comes back. <laughs> it's got it's got like a base. The i7 plus has a base. So it, it stops on the base and then it vacuums all the stuff out of the Roomba into a bag, you know, and nice. then it goes off and it does its job again once it's emptied. Hmm. It's so great. That's cool. Yeah. All right, Dave, what do you got? Um, <laughs> well, I said these a while back on the show, but I'm going to say them again because they are good. Number one. When you are at a gas station filling up gas and you're at that time, <laughs> that seems to slow down to feel like it's forever because you're waiting on your gas. That is the time yeah. to open your doors and take all the cans and the papers and all the things out and throw them away. That yeah. easy one, That's a good easy one. one right there. And then, oh, oh, the gas is done. Awesome. All right. Number two, um, you know, when you open a new package of Tylenol or something like that, and there's that little piece of paper and you have to like get your fingernails on it to like take it off. And it's really hard yep. to get to sometimes you take the, you take the, the thing and you use your knuckle <laughs> and you push it into there and you pop it. Dude, I did that today. No, I did that last night with, uh, with, uh, paprika. I got new spice. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't get, I just got to, and yep. yes. 100%. 100%. Yeah. All right. You I got one more. I got one more for you. Okay. I got All right, one go. more for you. I'm still this thinking. This is actually a really good life hack. <laughs> um, when you have kids, you know, once you have kids, um, grab buy a uh, buy a tape measure, you know, mm. because you're going to be moving around. Uh, you know, you're going to be moving from house to house. You don't want to mark how tall they are on the wall and then have to move to another house and yeah. lose that mark. Buy a tape measure and mark the tape measure. So that you've always got the tape measure and you know when they were grown and at what at what size they were. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's Billy, really good. Billy says that his life hack is keeping a bandana in the car to touch the gas nozzle with. Oh, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, because those are like I think about that all the time. I was like, if anything has COVID on it, it's the gas nozzle. But I do yes. keep a. Dude, those uh, things are so nasty. Chain. Yeah, they're gross. Yeah. They were already gross before, but I keep a key. The joy, with, the joy uh, of already having COVID. Now. 
I don't. Yeah, I, it's so many things of, I don't worry about anymore. The joy it's of awesome. COVID. <laughs> you should write a book. The joy of yeah. COVID. The joy of already getting COVID. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got All right. anything? I got one, but I want like I'll 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 just improv a second one. All right. So <laughs> you don't, don't have even need a two. <laughs> you just one. need one. I know, but like there's so many. I feel like I have a couple. I don't want to forget. All right. But the one for me that I've always done is you do not need to see your car in your side mirrors. Like That's there's true. no more yeah. blind spots. You just you you put your car just out of view, and then you no longer have blind spots ever. Mm-hmm. Like you're done. Okay. It's over. All right. You know? All right. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're seeing your car is just like a panic mode where it's like, oh, I have to see my car. You know, it's right. like, no, just adjust it so it's just beyond your car and you're yeah. good. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one. A the, one. That's a really good one. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. I think I got that one from Freddie, actually. Mm. Um, the second one, if I were to just freaking pull one out of thin <laughs> air. Oh, dude, this one. This one blew my mind. My neighbor. He does some handyman work on our place, my old place. And you have a stripped screw mm-hmm. and, you know, like the area that the – not your, your screw is fine. Mm-hmm. But the area that it goes into, the wood was just destroyed and the mm-hmm. hole is larger than the screw. Dude, mm-hmm. you break up some, some, uh, some freaking uh, toothpicks and you fill the hole with toothpicks. I was and worried then you were going to sc- say ramen noodles. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you screw the screw into that hole and it pushes all of the toothpicks against mm-hmm. the larger hole and it, you can hmm. you can fix whatever you know you basically just idea. fix the piece that it goes into yeah it's pretty good um so that would be my second one well yeah. done clan yeah not many people Thank have you. one let alone two yeah it's that they can one. think of immediately so <laughs> yeah <laughs> This was so much fun. This was really, really good, guys. You forgot one question, though, which is, what's your favorite video game? Ooh. Oh, you know, it's funny. I one. thought we of that earlier. That. When you were talking about video games, I was like, we need to add that to the mix. Yeah. I think we'll, yeah. I think we're going to do that. Yeah, that's All great. Right. But not, yeah, everyone, exactly. not everyone plays video games, but that's, mm-hmm. that's one. That's definitely one. What All is right. your favorite well, what video is game? <laughs> I mean, it's Smash Brothers, right? It's got to be. Right now, it's Smash Bros. Uh, Rocket League is great. Mario mm-hmm. Kart is the best. But like going back, Half Life, Metal Gear Solid, um, mm-hmm. Borderlands Two is amazing. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, yeah. Shadow of the Colossus, um, Katamari. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. But next time, ask next time. what their favorite video game is. Yeah, <laughs> it's on the list now. Well, yeah, and, you guys are I'll... awesome. Um, I'd say mine is Halo and GTA, hands down. Uh, Super Super Mario Brothers, like yeah. the uh, the the no the 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 Super Nintendo one, whichever one, the yeah. one I can beat in 22 minutes. Oh yeah, you Sweet. did that live. Yeah, I did that live. That was awesome. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <clears throat> that probably the Ninja Turtles arcade game. And Ooh, that one? Oh no, two. part two. That's part two technically, right? I no, it's just On the Nintendo? arcade game. Well. Yeah, yeah, it's part two on Nintendo. Maybe the the Simpsons arcade game. One day when I'm really rich, that's when I'll know I've made it. When I actually buy an old school Simpsons arcade game, mm. like the Crazy Taxi version, Simpsons Simpsons uh Road Rage. No, <laughs> oh, uh, G- it's like, like the, GTA. Uh, the the arcade game where you've got like the four person arcade game where you it's, know it's Marge, Ninja Turtles. Homer. It's arcade. Yeah, it's Ninja basically Turtles the Ninja game. Turtles arcade game, but that's awesome yeah. with the yeah. Simpsons reskin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we really appreciate you being on. That was really fun. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks for adjusting the timetable. Thanks to everyone who uh, stuck around to the end. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a feat. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, if people want to find you online, where can they find you? Yeah. You guys can come on over to youtube.com slash Punisher for uh, weekly weekly tutorials, weekly live streams. Uh, we're, we're doing C4D and After Effects. You guys can find me on Instagram at underscore Punisher underscore. It's kind of confusing. Mm. And you can, of course, find me uh, at Corridor or Corridor Crew on YouTube. We're mm-hmm. putting stuff out all the time. It's always a crazy time over there. So lots of different places. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, we're going to get out of here. You can rate us on iTunes, leave a review. It really helps five get our, our, our ratings out. Yeah, of course, five stars. 
Yeah. And, oh, by I, the way, uh, Cameron and and uh, Ariev, if you're still listening, Halo afterwards. I mean, Matt's up late at this point anyway. You might as well just get in some Halo. So I'm just saying. I'll save the wife's right asleep. Away. If the wife's asleep, maybe I'll play one game. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, hey, let's do one again yeah. with David. I want to do one with David. That's yeah. Totally. Combo one. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Uh, oh, we are going to do a, a Halloween episode with mm-hmm. EJ and David. Maybe you could join us for that. That could, that could yeah. be fun. If you think if I could out. add to the conversation and it wouldn't be too many people, then absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll Definitely. get with you on that. I'll see if I'll see if you can if you're available. We, Are, the problem is, is going to be date. a call-in gonna, show like the Christmas one is. It's going to be a call-in show, so okay. we're going to do scary client stories, things like that. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I got some of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and and I would love for people to send in their scary client stories as well. Oh, so I'll have idea. more information about that. I'm putting a little promo together, trying to get the date ready because that is kind of like up when Adobe Max is going on. So mm-hmm. we have like limited dates available for streaming. So, you know, we'll we'll uh, yeah. And and like David said, there's no real conversation to those. We just joke around for yeah, a couple hours and we drink do. or something. I don't know. Uh, it, it's yeah. a lot different. It's it, this is a this is a first time we've done it for Halloween, but this is our tradition with David and EJ for Christmas. Is we have a diff, we have like a set that we're on, you mm-hmm. know, green screens and everything, and we're in like this log cabin celebrating the holidays and just drinking. oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so let me know. I'm yeah. down. I'm down to hop in. Um, no pity invites though. No pity invites. No, but I'm thinking well, you could you Never could uh, you, get to know EJ. <laughs> that way no yeah. that'd be awesome that, yeah. that'd be really really cool i think he's you know awesome. what odds are ej's gonna show up two hours late anyway so you could probably <laughs> just take his place mowing his I lawn mean, mm-hmm. i don't want to replace <laughs> mr ej i don't think i could but uh we'll have a good time if, if yeah. we're all on it'll be it'll be chill yeah yeah, yeah so you just... guys rock thank you yeah, so look for that. We'll we'll figure that out. Um, you know, subscribe on your podcatcher of choice. I swear we're gonna send out a newsletter pretty soon. It's just been it's been nuts around here, and I'm kind of waiting until the course is launched. You can say you've been there, done that, got the T-shirt with the MoGraph logo T, the Paul Bab Feel the Bab 2020 shirt. All the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders. The Render Things T-shirt hoodie and long sleeve T. It's fall. It's almost winter. Well, it's fall tomorrow. And then it will be winter and you need a long sleeve render things yeah. shirt. And then of course the, that render is fire shirt, which you are only allowed to wear ironically, unless you're shams. Unless you're shams. Yeah. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com. Check us out on there. Come say hi, send us an email and uh, send us some scary client stories. Yeah. So. Clint, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Matt, Dave, you guys are awesome. Thank you for the invite. It's an honor. Um, I look forward to the next one. Yeah, totally. 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 Till next time, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And I'm Clint, I guess. (laughs) Is that me? Yeah, Yeah, that's you. That was awkward. All right. Have a good one. (laughs) Later, yo. (laughs) Yeah. All right, stand by here. (laughs) I hope my audio sounds fine. It's I'm so